mean you're keeping your 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 side fresh, right? You keep you keep shaving it. I yes, mean, I'm keeping it. Yep. I don't always show it. I only take it out for special occasions. Mm -hmm. <laughs> cool. <laughs> All right. All right. So you guys ready for the easiest sketch ever? I'm all good. All right. Heather's getting pencils, and then we're ready. I'll probably all share one. It's not gonna take long. <clears throat> so I didn't buy the paint that you suggested. I bought it. I bought this thing. Do you think that's gonna be okay? Hell yeah. <laughs> you got a huge selection of colors. I love that. Um, in fact, I might add that to my list of recommended paint supplies because I saw something similar on Amazon. Is that where you got it, Amazon? Yeah. Totally. Uh, yeah, because that's, that's no. Awesome. Actually, I got the exact same one from Amazon, but they my delivery was lost uh, a couple days ago, and so I Target picked up this one, which is the pretty much same thing. Right. Target pickup is amazing. All right. Well, let me know if any of the colors are weird or something, or if they feel like inconsistent, so I can sure. Uh, and then um, I have another question while we're waiting for pencils. So sure. I actually bought two because I like to buy things. Hold on. <laughs> <laughs> and you, I thought well, I mean, it was the I'm same. the same way, especially with art supplies. I, I want to try everything. Right? I thought it was the same because, and I just wanted extra paint, but this one says acrylic artist paint. And then this one says watercolor paint. That's different, huh? That is completely different. So I, I can't use this one then. I wouldn't use it today, but I hope to do some watercolor lessons in the future. So maybe. Uh, yeah, I mean, I'll use, especially since it's non-toxic, I can use it with my kids, but. Um, totally, a watercolor is typically done on paper and done flat. Cause it like the oh. whole process of it, it, it fading and puddling and absorbing into the paper is really part Makes of that sense. watercolor process. Um, and if you use them without watering them down, they're just like too much pigment and they don't flow right onto the canvas. So they're really meant to be watered down. Um, but I, man, I haven't bust out my watercolors in a while. I'd love to. So <laughs> All right, sounds good. Maybe we'll schedule a watercolor class in the future. I gotta get one of the cameras that like points downwards though. So I can do a flat, oh, <laughs> flat thing instead of this upright dealy. Um, but I'm sure I can figure it out. So anyway, easiest sketch in the world, guys. Ready? We're gonna do a horizon line. So we want our horizon line about one third, one third yeah. of the way up the canvas. Yeah. Be a smidgen higher. I'm going to throw it right about there-ish. Trying to keep it as straight as possible. Was that straight? No, not at all. No, not a little straighter. Now it's more crooked. That's right, because there are going to be mountains there anyway. Um, and that's the whole sketch. Yay! Oh, you can't even see mine. Mine? Yeah, about one third from the bottom. Yeah, I'm going to zoom in to this other camera. As long as I don't change my audio to the other camera, we should be all right. There we go. Oh, you still can't see it. But there's a line there, right there, going across my page. That's all I'm doing, just so I know where my water level is. Because um, our mountains can all vary in height, especially um, if, we're, if we're wine and painting. So we don't have a, a clear see, height. This, 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 this part part long, essentially, is what I'm saying. Hey, Dan. Yeah, what's up? This sketch, was, this sketch was far easier than the Van Gogh buildings you made us draw. Oh, I am so sorry about that. <laughs> I should have made it like explicitly clear that you should sketch this one. No, we just didn't read the email. Print it and sketch it. Yeah, yeah, but I got to keep that in mind too, that some people just don't read the email too. <laughs> and it's no offense. It's just, I forgot. <laughs> it's all good. It's all good. I bet you yours probably came out more came out more creative and better than a lot of people that did have it pre-sketched anyway. It was, it's my favorite. Because it was free. Right. All right, so we're going we're gonna to dive into painting right off the bat. We got our horizon line. We're going to go, we're just going to tack this thing. Um, I didn't paint, prep, prep my paints. Can I see what I'm supposed to prep real quick? You may prep. You may take your time and prep. Um, I do have white there on the palette too. You can barely see it right there. But I've okay. got... I've got yellow and red. If you I mean, if you want to use, you got so many colors there. So if you want to use some of those other colors in between these colors, yeah, go for it. I mean, you got all those colors. And yeah, oh, I don't have white. That's a problem. How do you not have? They didn't give you white. They did not give me white. The color. Oh. Yes, they did. Sorry, I already picked it. It's okay. igloo. Ig 
Right. Yeah, white's like one of the most important. And that's one of the downsides to getting that 30 tube thing or whatever, because they give you the same size tube of white as they do everything else, whereas they should probably give you like three times as much white. Yeah, yeah. that's what I, that's why I bought the second one, but oops, wrong one. That's all right. And then you can always just buy one extra tube of white. Next time. Mm -mm. And I did crack open my bottle of wine. So okay. I, the brushes that we need. I never I never drink, but in honor of Jamie's 40th. Woo! Woo I got whiskey. Happy 40th. Whiskey, all right. That's definitely a different style of wine than wine and paint. Whiskey and paint. It will definitely come out a little bit more whimsical, I think. <laughs> <laughs> I've had like two sips and I'm already buzzed, so. Yeah, I'm I'm a I'm a lightweight. I mean I'm not a lightweight, but I'm a lightweight when it comes to drinking. Not a so all I'm doing thus far is getting my brush wet. We're going to go nice and slow and steady. We're getting our brush wet. I'm using a, a one inch wide brush. Here. Um, I like it because it's pointy and it's wide at the same time. If you, if you got it, if you get it moist and pull it to a nice, I call it sharpening your brush when you pull it to a nice tip, you can see that the tip of my brush is yeah. almost as pointy, if not more pointy than a pointed brush. Yeah. Yeah, I'd say it's more pointy. Let's see. Oh, no. It's flat. So I, I like to start off with a nice wide brush so I can cover a lot of area real quick. And that's what we're going to do. We're going to cover the sky real quick. We're going we're gonna to slap on some of this. Uh, we're we're going to start with our brightest bright. So we're going to go bright yellow first. And then we're going to slowly throw in the rest. Quickly, not slowly. We're going to quickly slap in the rest of our colors. Ah. Um, bright yellow. See how it goes. So I'm going to start with just some really, really light yellow, which I'm doing mostly white, and a tiny, tiny touch of yellow. So it's almost as bright as it can get. The brightest bright yellow we could possibly get. So if we have like a medium yellow, we should like whiten it up a little bit. A whole, a whole lot, not just a little bit. Almost as light of a yellow as you could possibly make. That's what we're starting with. Okay. So it's almost, it's almost nearly white with just a touch of yellow in it. Right. That's what I'm going to start with my base, my base color here, right along my horizon line. And you can't see that at all on this camera, so I'm going to change cameras. I wish I had a button where I could just click and change. I love how my face freezes as it switches, too. That's the, breath. That's the best. Yes. It's always awkward. Here's where Dan does his magic. Always an awkward view, too. Right in that line, huh? So just straight yellow across the bottom, and we're gonna do above the horizon line and the below the horizon line at the same time. So our water and our sky kind of match. I'm gonna be a little more brushy, brushy, quote unquote, in the water. So you can see some more of my brush strokes going left to right, and those are gonna kind of create my waves. Whereas the sky, I'm gonna try to blend it a little bit more together, but it's okay if we have some brush strokes exposed there too. Those are gonna be happy little accents. Those are gonna be like the clouds fading into the sunset, so. So just the light yellow on the horizon. Just light yellow we're starting with. And while that's still wet, I'm going to jump and add a little bit of uh, just a touch of red to my yellow and just start creating a peach or an orange, depending on how, you know, depending on your color, really. Everybody's got different tubes of color, different brands. If your red is a little redder, see, mine went instantly. My red instantly took over. So I got to add some more yellow to this to orange it up a little bit. My red was way stronger than my yellow. I kind of want an orangish, orangish peach. So I'm taking, I'm kind of turning it orange and then adding white to it to make it more, more of a peachy color. And I'm going to do that for my next layer going across. And Does that go on top? Oh, top and bottom, right? Top and bottom. You see, I'm doing it really quick because my paints are drying like, like freaking lightning tonight. Um, babe, can you grab my water bottle? I usually have a water spritzer bottle to help me blend, but you can also just use water from your cup to help blend these colors. Wow. <laughs> I don't. I was doing big bold gold strokes going all the way across. And if I make two, the round ladies. But you have the big ones, right? I can't believe how fast my paint is drying tonight. It's faster than any night thus far. So I'm the only one that took down their Christmas tree yet. You guys take down your Christmas tree yet? No, nope. you already took it down? Yeah. 
God. I needed the elbow room. I, I can't. I can't stand being cramped up. Plus, it was up like three weeks before Christmas, so I figured it was time. <clears throat> so as I'm working across, you know, I'm, I'm being kind of sloppy, as you can see. It's not really even. I got some stray brush marks because I know I'm going to be changing brush or, uh, colors as I'm moving up. So uh, I took a little bit more red and added it to my peachy orangish color that I had going on, adding a tiny smidgen of white to that too. And that's going to be my next layer going up. Ooh, mine's a little too pink. I want it to be a little less pink than that. So I'm going to not add as much white next time I go to get some more color. But I'm working that in there. As I'm working it in, I'm kind of lessening, lessening the pressure of my brush stroke as I'm painting. And by doing that, it's kind of forcing the paint to blend together. <laughs> I'm trying not to go, I'm trying not to work up too much at any given time because I know I still want to switch over to red and magenta and add some blue. So I'm leaving lots of space here at the top to still change into other colors. And don't forget, I want to put some of that color in my water too. So I'm changing my technique ever so slightly in my water. I'm using more of that, the narrow surface of my brush and less of that wide surface of my brush. So I end up having more of these like lines showing up in my, in my strokes and my blending. More of those strokes are kind of showing through that way. If I don't use like the wide angle of the brush, if I use the, the thin side of the brush. And it leaves some of those brush strokes exposed, and that kind of looks like little waves. Especially as I work back in the distance there. And I'm trying to match. So if I'm going about three inches up with the pink, I'm going about three inches down with the pink below the horizon, trying to keep it symmetrical. Right. It's like a mirror image, and my glasses are already sliding off my face. So there they go. Yeah. yeah. <clears throat> more white? Anybody? Oh, these ones. Yeah, I'm going to use more white, but. Oh. Okay. <laughs> it's really pretty on camera. I gotta say, when I look on camera, it takes it like automatically forces me to take six steps back from it and and look at it from far away. You should. I mean, you guys are looking at it too close too to really get a good gauge of what it's gonna look like when you're done. You gotta at least hold it at arm's length or take a few steps back from it because nobody's gonna really be looking at your painting as close as you're painting it right now. And I automatically get that when I look up at my camera. I get to see from about six, seven feet away, automatically. Like magic. So far so good, guys? You follow along? Piece of cake, right? All right, so while it's still wet, before I chat too much, I'm gonna start dabbing a little bit more into my red and adding that to my pinkish color that I had going. So now it's much more rouge, some good rosy cheek color here. I'm gonna do that for my next layer. A little too much water in my brush and my red's a little too see-through. So I'm add a little bit more paint here. <clears throat> and straight red there. That's not straight red. It's got a little bit of still pink from my brush. On. Yeah. And as I'm running out of paint, I'm using less pressure. Water, anything and that is blending my previous color in with my existing color. <laughs> and I'm trying to make a smooth fade, but it doesn't have to be perfect. If you still see some brush strokes, to say I meant to do that. Oh, is this that really good <laughs> canvas? Oh, man. Hi. I didn't want to paint on this canvas. This is like a really loose one. I wanted to return this one to the store. Mm. Still return it? Return it with the painting done on it. <laughs> <laughs> you can do it. <laughs> um, okay, so I'm doing the same thing. My water's already dry here. So again, I'm using that same technique. Um, but I'm turning my brush on its on its side more, so I'm using more of the thin part of the brush, and that automatically is making more strokes exposed as I'm filling things in. I'm actually getting towards the bottom over here with this red. There's not going to be too much of this showing here because we're going to have, um, whoa, I'm dripping. Hey, babe, can you grab me something to wipe that up with? My red just dripped everywhere. Everywhere. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Oh, my goodness. This is a disaster. 
<laughs> um, it's it's very red on the floor. It looks like somebody died in here. <laughs> so we don't have to go any further down with our fade that we're doing here. As long as we got some, I got some brush strokes exposed to kind of simulate some waves there. As long as you got some a little bit of brush strokes exposed, it should be good to go. The next, because the next thing we're gonna do is is pretty much covering up that whole bottom two inches. So you don't have to worry about going any further down than that. But upwards, we're gonna go magenta and then blue. I'm gonna try to do that quickly before it dries, but it probably already dried. Because I've been complaining about my drips on the floor. Thank you for getting that, by the way. Appreciate it. And magenta. Here comes I don't the... have magenta, and it's my favorite color. Oh, <laughs> magenta. <laughs> Try to make a magenta then. So like do your best to use With white? Mostly, red, mostly red and just like a touch of blue, a touch of ultramarine blue. Okay, I'll try that. So it's most mostly red. You might have to white it up just a little bit if it's too dark. Mine got a little too much water in it, but I'm gonna use a little more magenta here. All oh, these colors look wild on camera. It almost like I'm using fluorescence. This is a little more realistic back here, though, to what my colors actually look like. When I hold my palette close to the camera, it looks a little too bright. So what's going on top there? More magenta? I am doing magenta above my red, yeah. My okay. red is like practically dried already, so I'm going to try to do my best to blend it in with a little bit of dry brushing as my brush is running out of magenta. Try to bring that into my red here. And it's okay, if you have any little white spots exposed, we'll cover them up with a tree layer, don't worry. <laughs> I'm just, I, I'm just going like, look okay, that's why I can't. Just... I'm gonna bring just a tiny bit of this magenta down here into my water, just a smidgen. Just on a couple of these little waves. I'm gonna blame this bush. <laughs> Even though you're probably not going to see it anyway, because I'm going to cover it up with plant life. Um, but for right now, I wanted to see a little more waves there. A little more life. You know, this painting is, it almost looks done to me already, even without the sec second step. We can just call it quits after this step. <laughs> Party over. <laughs> Party over. I got drunk. Hang, hang up on the wall. Call it done. <clears throat> So as I'm working my way up, I'm gonna slowly leak in just a tiny bit more blue as I'm creeping up here. My paints are just drying way too fast. So I'm constantly touching like the surface of my water to bring a little more life back to my paints. Otherwise they feel super, super dry. So as I'm landing more blue, it turns more purple. But I kind of want to get to like all the way blue at the top. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna go blue on my brush and that's the color I want to get to. I'm just putting that as a kind of a reference point. Then I want to creep up to that color quickly, how fast I want to fade from one color to another. So I'm adding a little more blue. I want more of a purpley purple here. And I got to do it quick if I don't want my colors to dry. So I'm trying to work as fast as I can. Yeah. Hopefully you got a nice wide brush like I do and not a little tiny thing. Otherwise this thing is going to take all night. <laughs> but then you hack the way some of us were painting that starry night last week. Last week, two weeks ago? Yeah. Last week? Um, you know, some of us really had a challenge the way we were painting it. Some of us were painting it like Van Gogh. We had a small brush. We were doing lots of stuff. That's why it took some, some people like a day to finish. But I tell you what, I got some of those shots of people finishing a couple days later. Boy, did they look good. That was fun. I enjoyed it. I like, I love how unique everybody's came out. Because I'm so used to doing these classes and having everybody's Everybody trying to simulate the same thing, you know? And that class was way different than the huge. All right, so I got mostly purple. So I'm, I am at, I'm adding a ton of blue here to force myself to get to this blue color at the top. Because I really want it to be blue at the very tippy top. I'm gonna put this clamp down so it puts some pressure. One of these days I'm gonna get myself a new easel too, because this thing has got some age to it. Boy, oh boy. How old is it? Uh, I, I got it uh, senior year in high school. That's old, Dan. From from my buddy Jimbo. Remember Jimbo? 
Jimbo, who is Jimbo? What's the last name? Jimbo Gustafson. Oh yeah. Yep. Married Amy Lilja. Oh yeah. You gave me a painting once, Dan. Of? A uh, tiger or something? Like in high school? Yeah, like we hung out once and then you were like, I, I was like, I really like this one. And you're like, you can have it. No kidding. Yeah, isn't it nice? You're so nice. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know where it is. I apologize for that. I did not intentionally throw it away. I don't know where any, where any of my stuff is. I'll tell you what. I have no idea. <laughs> I, couldn't even tell, I couldn't even tell you what's hanging on the wall behind me. <laughs> it's all over. I got paintings coming on my butt. Um, <laughs> you know what? I missed this year. Usually, I mean, uh, we get together for Christmas, my family and I, and that's usually when I do a, like a, a, a good unload of my paintings. I'll give a lot of these away. Yeah. So my, my place doesn't get so damn crowded with artwork. Um, but I didn't have that this year. So I got just this closet full and my walls are all full. And I almost feel like I can't paint anymore because I don't have any more space to put my done paint. <laughs> You just you should sell it on Etsy. Mm -hmm. I should, you know. Well, I, I got my website too. I just need to market more. But you know, there's only so many hours in the day. <laughs> True. All right, so I'm trying my best to blend this purple into my red here. So I'm creeping down with that purple into my red, lightly blending it together, using my water a little bit to help out. I've got some like see-through spots because where I used water, so I might go over it with another coat in just a second. Um, but I kind of okay. like that's very dramatic. <laughs> kind of like where it ended up. I'm gonna end up the you see my original one, or actually my original. Yeah, I did have a lot more blue in my original too, and there's a lot more blue in this sample I did here too to make it a little more closer to evening, closer to nighttime, the end of dusk, you know, the last moment of twilight after the sun has really already set. There's just that most beautiful moment of color. So that's what we're trying to trying to capture all those, all those reds and peaches and yellows all at once as much as we can. So I'm going to put a little more blue, but I think I like my one today better than this one. So must be doing something right. Well, like I said, it's my third time painting this one too. So. <laughs> oh, hey, Julie. Yay. My cousin. Cousin Julie. Cousin Julie, welcome. Hello, Cousin Julie. How are you? Hey, how are you? <laughs> Come, paint with us. Okay, I'm trying to get my stuff. I'm like running around the house and and then. Yes, pause. For that. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. Best way to start. There you go. <clears throat> So I have to wait for this to dry just for a second because I noticed as I was trying to blend this together, I don't know if you could see this, you can see this on camera, that um, as I was blending it together, I was starting to pull off paint. You can see that right about there. So I needed I needed to dry for just a moment. Um, and I'm gonna do like another layer of purplish, purplish blues on top of that, that sky there. But hopefully you're at about the same step. And if you used a few more oranges, a few more yellows, it's going to look slightly different. In fact, mine in real life looks a little bit more orange and yellow than this. This camera's, cam camera's not capturing it perfectly. Let me flip back to this, this camera, see if it's a little more accurate. No, not really. There's quite a bit more orange in real life. Not getting those oranges. It's all good. You guys are going to have to flip, though, and let me see yours once in a while. Okay. <laughs> I showed you mine. <laughs> I know the rules. <laughs> <laughs> mine looks nothing like that right now. Like. <laughs> That's all right. If you're not ready to show it, you don't have to. I'm force you. I'm going to force you. You can see. I feel see like I need to work on my, my blending strategies. Keep, keep on <laughs> blending. Um, I mean, it doesn't have to be perfect at the moment. I'm going to do another coat on top of this, this part here. And you can see the mine didn't blend quite right either. But where it doesn't blend, that's where it's going to be clouds, you know? That's where it's going to be uh, just happy little axe. Okay. But I'm going to, I'm going to leave this, this uh, water the way it is because a lot of this water is going to get covered up. We're going to have a big, dark silhouette shape here for the grass in the foreground. We're going to have some big, dark silhouette shapes for the trees. So again, if there's a messed up spot, we can just cover it up with a tree. Um, and mountains. We got mountains too that we're going to put back here. 
And those that I want to sketch first because I wanted that to kind of happen naturally with our brush. Like if our brush accidentally hit too high, then it's just going to be a taller mountain, you know? I have never done this before and I think I love it. Yay! We have anything to do together. Yeah, I would love to do it a lot. Yeah. Because I bought five canvases, so I'm ready four more times. It's cheaper if you buy the five pack. It doesn't make sense to buy one. Yeah. In fact, I don't think you can buy one. I think you have to buy two. No, you buy two or five for the same or price. Five. Yeah. On Amazon, at least. Yeah. Michael says the best deals. Yes. Michael's always has that five pack on sale. Yeah. Like 10 bucks. But then you can't use the coupon. No. Oh, really? Not Two bucks for Canada? Like, you... I, got that 20, I got that 20 pack once in a while, though. I really want to go at it. So All right, Julie. Uh, you ready, Julie? Let's show on in live, like in real person. I'm ready. I think I, I, oh my God, I'm like so stressed out. Don't stress. Don't stress. We're taking our time here. You know what? We got the easiest sketch in the world to start I off with. Mean... All you need is one pencil line. Okay. Where your horizon's going to be. Okay. Uh, mine ended up a little lower on this one than my first example over here. I ended up a little tiny bit higher. I don't know, about a hand's width, a little higher than a hand's width. Okay. About a third, third of the way up is our line. And then we're just trying to reflect the colors. I started with just white with a tiny, tiny, tiny bit of yellow on my brush to do um, that first stroke across. So that's all you gotta worry about right now is just white and yellow. Ooh, there we go. Looking Ooh. good. There's oh. mine. I need to blend on the that side over there a little bit. That's cool. It's, oh yeah. Well, wait, well, wait a second. I'm gonna I'm gonna attack that again in just a second too. Just just some more okay. purples. Do you have purple? I do have purple. Okay, perfect. We're gonna throw some purple in there. It's weird because it does not look the same on camera as it does, but it it shows like the imperfections better. Yours looks wildly fiery, actually. It does because I didn't have a lot of pinks. I had all the colors of fire. Cool. <laughs> Sunsets look like that sometimes. It's all yep. good. But when I saw the picture, I was like, I'm totally making mine turquoise and purple and pink. But then like I got nervous and forgot. So <laughs> next time. <laughs> next time. Absolutely. There'll be plenty more times. You can see I actually took this one down off my wall. There's an empty space right over there. That's where it was hanging. <laughs> yeah. This one was actually hanging up on the wall. Wait, I have to show Julie my new cup. She wasn't here for that. Show her the cup. I'm also wearing a fun shirt that says vintage 1980 all original. Nice. And my cup says more fun than two 20 year olds. <laughs> nice. I, love it. I love it. Yeah. That's all I have been. Jamie, my, my girlfriend turned 40 in December too, and I totally got her that same shirt. Awesome. <laughs> all original part. <laughs> so does it hurt does it hurt jamie to be 40 yeah because i gotta turn 40 later this year and i just want to know so no. do i 40 club i thought it would but it's because of the pandemic and stuff i'm just looking forward to anything so that's great <laughs> not as bad although today i did think joey told me which was really mean he said he goes what was it to uh 2050 hold on one second Oh, no. He said, we are just as far away from 2050 as we are from 1990. And I was like, shut your mouth. <laughs> yeah, right? That is crazy. Oh. I know. And I was like, it's impossible. 1990 was 10 years ago. What are you talking about? I know. Yeah. And then 2050 wrote to me like 70. Oh, my goodness. I know. If we can, if we can get be that lucky, you know. I did have a Seriously. moment where I was like, "Holy crap!" I'm like on the backslide, but we're fine. I'm fine. Forty's <laughs> a new thirty. I love how your husband was the. Uh, yeah, he told me that, and I'm like, "Um, excuse me." I don't know. Is he, your, is he your age or is he older than you? Is he older? Oh, no, he's he's younger than me by exactly thirty days. Yeah. <laughs> Which is funny. Yeah, Clint's younger than me by um. Yeah by six months so it's like i'm an old lady over here oh yeah <laughs> so he likes to tell everyone he's into older women even though he's <laughs> 1981 oh, 
Yeah. <laughs> nice, nice. Same thing. Do it, me and you. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, all right, so I'm gonna I'm gonna attack this purple here in just a second. Yeah, I'm pretty dry. I'm dried up over here, so I'm gonna attack my purple. But before I do, because I know they're drying so fast, I'm mixing like three different um, reddish purples that I want to use first on my palette. That way, I'm kind of prepared that this stuff is drying so fast this next time. So I'm not surprised as I'm painting. I've got my three purples here ready to rock. So I've got my bluish purple, my purple purple, and my reddish purple. Three purples ready to go here. My my uh, blue kind of stinks actually. My what is this brand? Blick acrylic ultramarine blue. Um, what were they that type of purples you suggested we have? God awful. Uh, what you say again? Tell me about the purples again. How many purples? Uh, I got three. I got three, three different purples here. I got a bluish purple, my my purple purple, which is like my neutral purple, which is equal red and blue, and then I've got my more reddish purple or more my more magenta color. But I got these three ready to rock and roll, and I'm gonna start with my bluish one at the top and go back over this existing bluish that I have up here. Purple, purple? Yeah, which is purple, purple. purple. Like, like, <laughs> I know I did the same thing in my brain. I was like, oh, what is this supposed to do? And I'm just going over my blue here. Maybe even bring a little extra blue in there for fun. So are you going over your blue with purples or with blue? Both. I just touched my blue just because I didn't feel like it was bluish purple enough. So I just touched the surface of my blue and brought a little extra blue in there. Gotcha. It'll be a little more descriptive for everyone. You, have you ever watched, uh, what's his face? The Afro guy, Bob Ross. Yeah. He's so my husband calling this all day. He's like, all right, when's Bob Ross start? <laughs> I, uh, yeah, I just need to perm my hair and I got it going on, right? No, he's so he's so much more laid back. I don't know if he just like injects himself with something before he goes on TV, or he's just like really, really stoned. But like he is so nondescript when he is painting. He doesn't say it, what the hell he's doing. It's just like automatically, magically, there's trees there, and there's like no explanation of what he did. Oh, yes, Joey and I like to spend our time watching that show. You know, I fall. I actually enjoy watching it fall fall asleep at night. I I'm not done yet. It's a good, quiet, slow-paced show that, that lulls true. you to sleep. Just a little bit. <laughs> so I'm using all my purples as I'm working down. I'm using those other purples that I had mixed up. I got to get rid of this white spot that's right here. That's got to go. But as far down as you feel like natural, you want to go and mix them in, as I'm getting down to the colors that I don't have, uh, the non-purple colors, I'm using, I'm letting my br brush kind of run out of paint and I'm using a dry brush technique and I'm just kind of brushing that back and forth to let that blend in. You can actually feel, it kind of feels sandpapery on your brush when, when you get to that dry brush mark and you can use that and apply more pressure to help blend into that other color that you no longer have because it's already dry. Seriously. And because I'm standing on the side of it, I'm kind of getting this natural like uh arch curve to my paint. That's only because of the direction that I'm standing. If I was standing right in front of my canvas, I'm sure it would look a little different. I think I want to bring it down just a little bit lower. I don't know. I kind of like it. I kind of like where it is. I'm kind of running out of purples again, so I might have to make, mix another batch of three purples and attack it again here in a second. Uh, is it working for you guys? Is it? Uh, oh, yeah. How's it going? I'm stress painting. <laughs> I haven't gotten to the purple. <laughs> oh yeah, and I gotta help out. I gotta help out Julie. I, you know, I see you're stressed over here on this other monitor. How you doing there, Julie? I'm trying to catch up. I'm on the the red. Kind All of... right. Now don't forget. You want the same colors kind of reflected. So don't don't forget the before your paints dry out to use those same colors on the the okay. mirror image on the opposite side. Okay. And then I'm I'm I, I was saying that I'm kind of I'm a little more brushy brushy down here in the water. I'm I'm letting some of those brush strokes show a little bit more when I'm working left to right in the water. It's kind of just creates the illusion, just a little bit that there's waves there. Just the tiniest semblance of, of some brush strokes there. It doesn't really have to be much. It's as long as it's a little, little brushier than your sky. 
it'll create the illusion that it's a different texture, that's a different material. In the middle, oh. up top, the purple goes up top. Yeah. Yeah. So a few more purples here. Three purples. One, two. My third one's going to be over here. A little more magenta. And I'm going to zoom back into my canvas here so you can see what I'm doing more. You don't see, need to see my face. Oh, especially when it freezes like that. Did you see that? That was beautiful. Love it. Best. <laughs> One half, I half open. <laughs> oh man, gotta love it. All right, so I'm throwing some of this color in here. Yeah, so this this purple is like way darker. So now you can see that this, this is turned out like darker than the natural sky color. So I'm gonna say that this is clouds. This, this is my cloud color here coming in. Some natural variations happening in there because I've created so many different purples now at this point. Although if you're less of a fan of purple, we can go straight to different blues in there too. I see turquoise. Heck, you can even throw some turquoise in there if you want to. Okay. Make this easier. Yeah. Where can I throw in some turquoise? And with your blues at the very tippy top. <laughs> at the very tippy top. He's like, I've decided I'm going to use two of them. I don't know how more it gets to be like very horrible. So whatever color ends up the darkest, you want it on. Oh, oh, yeah, that's like a right. The uppermost three inches there. Uh, <laughs> I knew that was going to happen. I have to hold on to it. I think it's going to crash there. I know. Oh, it looks really good, though. Oh, you like that? Yeah, it looks good. <laughs> I saw it flip down there for a second. I paint too hard, and then eventually this, it falls off the table. There's pushers. Sure right. That's not your fault. I totally get into it. That's the easel's fault. They built it poorly. Agreed. They should have more grippy on the bottom. Oh, no. It's never the Bertha girl's fault. You know, so, you know, mine looks kind of watercolory down here at the bottom where I did use a lot of water, which is cool because that part's supposed to be water. So I guess it makes sense that that part looks watery. Oh, no. Oh, Dan, we didn't do it like you. Uh, what? What part? The oh, wiring water. part. <laughs> okay, we can come back and throw some highlights in there later if you want to. You can see that my original one doesn't really have too many watery brushes anyway. And remember I said that you know, this, good, this good part that looks really good right here, that really looks watery and wavy, it's going to get covered up by a brush anyway, by yeah. all this foliage. So much foliage. Oh, you're right, yeah. This, this is fun. so much bluer. Yay! I'm having so much fun. This one's so much bluer. Oh, I got a pan right far. Now I'm legit. Mm -hmm. mm. So if you want to get bluer, you can go bluer with it. Because I was feeling more purpley today. Oh, <laughs> Julie, I just got your text. She's like, I'm ready. <laughs> <laughs> and I wasn't doing anything either. I was watching Anne with an E on Netflix, which is like the probably one of the lamest shows out right now. It's so good. I love it. <laughs> Wait, what's that about? It's like about Anne of Green Gables and uh, the Puritan life of America. Oh, the Puritan life. Yeah, that's very exciting. It's like feminism born. Yeah, exactly. Um, feminism born? So she's... <laughs> or feminism born. Feminism born. Born. <laughs> nice. The start of feminism. I was gotcha. just like enjoying my Anne. I was like, I feel like I'm missing something. <laughs> And paint with me. I'm an idiot. <laughs> uh, I think I'm just gonna have to embrace the fire because it is it is there. I love that. Maybe yours looks should look like it's like a like a oil spill fire. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Go with it. Run with it. I wish mine looked more fiery, actually. Mine's not fiery enough. All right, we're getting there. Oh, Julie, just so you know, I went to high school with Dan. Oh, yeah. We're in the same class, and Heather, too, obviously. 
Yes. And then to my right is my friend Candice. And then Michelle Turner Smith up there is her bestie boo. And then Janine is my very bestie friend from work. Hey. Work. Hey, everybody. Books, and if you're not up by the time, then you're not getting a book and you're just getting locked in your room. <laughs> Sorry, guys. My daughter's being threatened for not going to bed. Oh. <laughs> oh. <laughs> that that was, it's so early still. She's five. Oh, okay, never mind. <laughs> we forget when our kids are a little bit older, we're like, oh. Uh, you know, <laughs> I'm a bad parent. I let my kids stay up as late as I want. Oh, she can hear you now. She's never going to bed. <laughs> she does. She goes to bed wherever she wants. She knows it. <laughs> Dan's baby girl's named Skyly Peach. Isn't that awesome? Oh, wow. I know. Yeah, just like this color right here. Skyly Peach. Right there, that's Skyly Peach. Um, all right, I'm going to show you guys again. It feels like nothing at all changed, but. <laughs> oh, but yeah, it did. Yeah, it did. That is looking good. Oh. Is the bottom too uh, wavy? Too wavy? You know, maybe I would do some back and forth strokes there, some horizontal. But I like the fiery look. I do like it. So I don't want to ruin something I like. I have to make sure I chug a lot of this for bed tonight. I got to work. What time is your birthday? I'm not till 11. Like, oh, I yeah. act like that's like difficult. But oh, 11 is reasonable. Yeah. We can work. Yeah. Can no, work I'm doing my side hustle too. So I, I think I probably talked about it last night. No, yeah, I'm you were telling me about that. Yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, I'm supposed to be on break right now for my other job, but I'm, I like packed in like five clients tomorrow. So I'm like, yes, that paper. Hell yeah. Get that money. Get that solopreneurship going. Yeah, Julie, I do. I'm doing some private practice. I think I put it on the light hall page. Yeah, I saw that. How is it going? Ah, it's good. I have um actually on my, on my, registrar in the system i have like 18 active clients wow. and a couple to get their paperwork done and stuff and then i might be closer to 20 so if i can get up to 2025 i i can janine close your ears i can quit my other job <laughs> <laughs> i know you told me already i will leave i can't leave you that's awesome. are you still invited to the paint parties of course yeah totally Trouble. And when and when we can go out again, we'll go party hardy. Oh, big time! If if we can ever go out again. Yeah. Um, <laughs> laughing because um, the last time Heather and I saw the inside of a bar, I left my credit card there because you know, adulting and maturity. <laughs> I saw a meme that said like the best thing about 20, my my New Year's resolution in 2020 was to not leave my credit card because um, score. I nailed it. <laughs> <laughs> you see, you saw that meme. You mean I woke up and sent you that meme. I mean, you woke up and sent me. She sent me that. Excuse me. Heather sent me that meme. Yeah, real. Smart. So we really did it up hard before March shut down. Um, so that was silly. We were at Jimmy D's of all places over by the racetrack. Oh, wow. That's the place I broke my phone during the train crawl at, at school, too. <laughs> Apparently, I shouldn't go there. To be honest, it's gonna be too lucky yeah. for you. It's just an unlucky spot. Nothing good will come of it. But yeah, at least you haven't lost any credit cards this year. Good job. Great. It's pretty impressive. <laughs> <laughs> are, are you supposed to paint on like the side of a canvas? But well, there's a meme about it. I guess. Hey, if you uh, if you are caught up and you got a second and you still got some colors there on your canvas that aren't completely dried up, and uh, yeah, go for it. Um, you can see that some of the paintings I have on my wall hanging behind me. Well, all of them are unframed, and it looks a little nicer when they have the edges painted. So some of them have their edges painted, some of them don't. Um, but yeah, it, I think it looks a little nicer having the edges done up, a little more finished. I don't know okay. what I'm to do it today. I actually have this acrylic canvas paper, and it's in like a binder, and you can just rip the pages out, and you have a thicker piece of canvas instead of buying a thick wooden. Oh, you don't have the stretch yeah. bars to worry about. Yeah. It'll be way easier to frame too. Yeah, so oh. I use those a lot, especially when I'm, you know, just having fun and. Sketching, yeah, sketching with your pants. 
Yeah. For sure. I like that idea. Yeah. And then so you, it's like, uh, how many pages was it? Oh my God, like 60 pages. Whoa. Yeah. So it was pretty cool, actually. For how much money? Um, let's see. <laughs> Always looking for a bargain. Yeah. I think I got it at Hobby Lobby. Right. So it looks like this. People. Come on. And it's just individual pages like a notebook. And it's not wrinkling up on you while you're painting on it? Uh, a little, but tiny bit. Like you know, it out a little. And it's not okay. terrible. And if I let it I've painted out before. Yeah. It's been a while though. Yeah, I got this. Yeah, so what's the price tag on it? Sixty pages. Oh wait, hang on. This one is this one is twenty four. I know I have a sixty page one. Okay. But I don't know. Let's let's guess. Hobby Lobby probably eight ninety nine with a fifty percent off coupon like they always have. <laughs> so. All right, all right. That's very reasonable then. Yeah. Especially yeah. for those doodles. When we're just doodling. Yeah, I had. It. All right. Speaking of doodling, since most of us have our sky done and we're talking about painting the edges and stuff now at this point, um, let us throw our mountains in before we take like a halfway quote unquote quote unquote break. Um, just pour ourselves another glass of wine, use the bathroom if we have to. Um, but I want to throw these mountains in here real quick. Um, so using some of these same colors that we have on our palette, I want to make um, a very light version, almost similar to the lightest color that's in the background. So like a, a similar to a uh, very light yellow. So that's what I'm starting with on my palette here. I've got my white and my yellow. And then I've got some of my other colors here that I already have mixed. So I'm just gonna like drag my brush across those colors and mix them with my white yellow. So now I have this very white yellow. Um, by mixing the close complement into there, which was those purples, I dulled down that yellow. And that's what I'm gonna start with my mountain that's furthest in the distance is this dull um, washed out yellow color that I have here. So I'm gonna okay. start. And this is gonna be the mountain that's furthest in the background. And you can put it wherever you wanna put it. I'm gonna put mine yeah, on the left hand side near the middle. And you can see it looks kind of dark compared to the rest of my colors. You get a smaller brush. I don't know. Maybe. But there it is. And it kind of blends into the background a little bit because this is the one that's gonna be faintest in the distance. And I'm just letting my brush kind of do naturally what it wants to as far as the shape of that mountain. I'm not really concentrating on making it perfect. Yeah, yeah. Maybe reflecting a little bit into the, into the ocean below it with a couple of tiny little horizontal strokes. So I have some semblance of a reflection down there of it. But it is very, oh yeah, I got to change camera so you can see what the heck I did. <laughs> yeah. There we go. So yeah, you can barely see it. That's the one that's way off in the distance. Like a, that's the furthest mountain. You can have your furthest mountain on the right hand side, left hand side, it could be right in the middle, it could be all the way over here, wherever you want to put it, it's all good. But I just is it let... kind of brown? It is kind of a brownish color, yeah, because it was yellow and then I mixed a little bit of purple in with it. So it ended up turning kind of a dull brownish, yellowish, brownish yellowish is what I'll call it. But in my example painting, I think that I have there, the printout that I gave you guys, I think it's a little more gray, but either color will work. As you can see in this example painting that I did last time, it's more of a, almost a straight brown, a brownish purple. Oh, everything's in reverse. Ah, oh, oh, there we go. Oh my God, I feel so much pressure now. Yeah, it's like a brownish purple, yellowish brownish purple. As long as a nice light, light color, light hue. And we're gonna work our way darker as we're making more and more mountains. So the second mountain, I'm gonna I'm gonna add a little bit more of these purples and blues that I have left over. So I'm starting with that same brownish, yellowish color, and then I'm just adding some more of this bluish purple to it. If you have brown, you can add a smidgen of brown to it. But I don't know if I want to add brown. I think brown's gonna dull down my colors a little bit too much. So, so do we start at the top of the yellow, like? Is that? I started right on my horizon line. Oh, okay. Kind of naturally just jogged my brush across that and just kind of naturally made a mountain or a hill. Just just whatever your brush decides to do going across there for this first one. <laughs> just, just to break the seal, just to break the seal. I'm not trying to do anything specific. Can we get a little closer? Yeah, totally. 
<clears throat> just shout out anytime you want me to do that. I love it when my face freezes. Dude, that's so funny. <laughs> um, so I'm using somewhat more. I added a little bit more of that purple to my yellow. And so now I have a darker version of that brownish yellow. And that's what I'm going to use for my next mountain. Just slightly darker. This looks like a weird grayish brown. I'm going with it. I'm going with it. Go with it, Dan. So this is my next mountain. And I'm trying to stay just above my horizon line. <laughs> Anything specific, really. Yeah. They're just laying, laying in a little. This walk. looks really good until I put a mountain on it. Ugh. Oh, really? Yeah, it now it looks like. Well, maybe your mountain needs to be taller then. So you can just fix your mountain and make it like one of these kinds of mountains. Oh, I like that. Okay. Give it more of a tip to it. If it's looking a little too blobby, like mine looked a little like a dead seal a second ago. I don't want to look like a dead seal. I want it to look like a mountain. So I give it maybe a little little sharp peak in here or there, a little triangular, and it's jutting out. That way it looks a little more mount mountainous and not so dead seal like. God, Dan, you're so good. I, I'm trying to be descriptive. I'm trying not to be like Bob Ross, where I'm just like, let's just throw it on there. <laughs> no, I'm just I'm complimenting. I was just I should have. Uh, yeah. Thank you. I know it can be frustrating though at times. You're fine. I'm sorry. I'm sorry that you're frustrated. If I was there with you, I would I would guide your hand. Thank you, sir. I would. I would hold your hand and we would make a mountain together. Aw. That's so fun. <laughs> <laughs> but till then I have to just try to be as descriptive as possible and just slap it on the canvas and hopefully you can attempt to do the same. So I'm using that same color and, and just doing a couple really, really light, just grazing my brush against the canvas just to make a couple of waves underneath there. Try not to overdo it. Just a couple, just grazing it against there because I want them to be really small in the distance. Try to make a mirror image so it's a little taller over here. I'm gonna put a couple more over here. A little taller on that side, a little taller right here. You, it looks like you made the Coors Light Mountain there. Did I? A little. Sweet. <laughs> I like it. I like it more now. Maybe that's the one that mine looks like, to be honest. So that's our second layer of mountains. Maybe I'm going to add another little mountain over here just to bake, break the edge of the picture plane a little bit. I kind of lost my horizon line, too. I'm not sure where that ended up. I'm gonna try to line it up with my other mountain. Another <laughs> <laughs> put her paintbrush in her mind. No. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> Never good. <laughs> That's funny. These mountains are killing me. The mountains are killing you. Well, that's right, because we got one more layer of mountains, and you can cover up any of the ones that are killing you. So we're going to make one more slightly darker color. In fact, it's going to be close to that same color that we did in our darkest color in our sky up here. This really dark purple I'm going to make. And then I'm going to throw a little bit of yellow in there, too, to make it even darker. So I'm mixing my dark purple up. I'm going to switch camera so you can see that I'm mixing stuff. I'm really just making a nice dark color. I'm not cleaning off my brush in between, so I still have some remnants of the previous color being mixed in there. And I'm adding some blue and some red to that. Some magenta. And I'm making a nice dark deep. I like it. It's gonna be slightly less chromatic than the darkest color that we have up here because we're adding some yellow to it. So it's like a brownish, uh, brownish purple. We don't want it to go all the way brown. I want to still have some little purple showing through. And I'm gonna use that for my last layer of mountains. So, or any mountains that I want to cover up. So over here, I want to cover up this mountain a little bit. So I'm gonna put this mountain on top here. And I want my color to be just a little darker, not quite so see-through as it is here. Let's see, that's a little see-through. <laughs> my bad blue, I got a bad blue. So my blue is a little bit see-through. I'm gonna see if I can find another blue to use. Pretty sure I got another blue around here somewhere. Exactly. You can see that last mountain I laid in there is is kind of transparent. I don't I don't want that. I want it to be an opaque color. So I'm trying to find another blue. Yeah, this blue is a little better. 
and I'm remixing my brownish, purplish, dark color. Oh, there we go. That's mucho better. <laughs> it's inevitable. I know. I was about ready to do it. Yeah. <laughs> wow. I don't want one coming off this side over here. This is my big bottom over here. Okay. Come on. So the ones in the foreground, a little more in the foreground, we can make a little bit taller. It really punches there in front of the other mountains. Are you using like a purplish color, the closer up ones? Yeah, this is my, this is my, um, if I can see my palette here real quick. I have my darkest purple that I was using in my sky here. And then I just added, then I just added a little bit of that yellow there to kind of tone it down a little bit. So it's not so vibrant purple, not as vibrant of a purple that I have in the top most part of my sky. And that's what I'm using for these darkest mountains that are in the foreground. And I'm gonna bring a little bit of that same color into those waves too, for that uh, little mirrored reflection. Okay. Just a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I'm just, I'm just grazing the surface of my canvas with my brush going side to side. And that's how I'm making those waves. Mm. Mm, my mountains kind of look like turds. <laughs> I'm going to sharpen those turds a little bit. <laughs> they're, they're a little swirly. A little, yeah, swirly. A little right pointy. Right Where, uh, can I see them? Let me see. Hold it up again. <laughs> oh, they look good. You're being, right, you're right. being too critical. All right. Mine look like turds, too. <laughs> Big, wide, like dinosaur turds. Yeah. It's all good. All right. So um, that, I believe, yeah, we got three layers of mountains there. Um, that is our pausing point. I'm just going to take a brief break. I'm going to mute myself. You can talk amongst yourselves, though, if you want to. I'm going to take a quick bathroom break. I'm going to refill my wine. We're going to take about five minutes. We're going to come back and attack this thing and finish it off. Remember, any of those messed up parts, we're going to cover up with a tree. So don't worry about it. Thank you. Okay. Love it. Awesome sauce. Okay. Okay. Oh my God. Thanks for your Except for I'm feeling like anxious about my terrible mountains. Yeah. Well, the good news is it's going to be good regardless. And then you can just give it to Clint for his birthday. <laughs> Perfect. Because his birthday is like around the corner, too. Hey. I don't know. <laughs> That's a that's random guess. Yeah, I'm like, you know what? Your significant other needs a copy of your love and your art. Mm -hmm. Good. Still good on your drink? Here, come look at. No, I, I probably need more. Come look at these mountains. Are they terrible? This is gonna be your birthday. This is gonna be your birthday present. Hey, to us. That's not what? Good. I said, um, Clint should come say hi real quick. I want to wait. If you want. Come say hi if you want. Okay. 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 I mean, I know you're colorblind, but look at these turdy clouds. Uh, <laughs> what are they? Mountains. Come. Are they just absolutely terrible? I don't know how he does those underneath mountain things. I saw that. I was like, I don't, I can't. Do that. Mine mm. looks nothing like that. It, it looks very bad. It does look very bad. I'm sure. A little accident. Clint, you should be a motivational speaker. Just quoting Bob Ross. Oh, Clint should. <laughs> he's quoting Bob Ross. What did he say? Happy yeah. accident. All the mistakes are just happy accidents. All right. <laughs> I like it. <laughs> He's saying hi. Hi, happy birthday. Thank you. You're welcome. <laughs> what can I do to make them better? Great. What? You just gotta wait until that finished product. <laughs> the mountains. Oh, They're great. Nice. Thank you. Just leave them alone. I'd like to remind you of yeah. the buttons on your wheel. On one way and then the other. So and how you can like those either when they're across. Like this color. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, like this color. Yeah. Yeah. 
give them the dimension you want. But it's hard to get them to a point like that. Yeah. Did anybody that watch Bill Murray's Scrooge yeah. Christmas? What? No. Was it good? Yeah, it's that silly one where he, it's um, basically like, what's the real story? The clock, it's the- oh, oh, movie. Right. Love that movie. Love it. So normally our family tradition is to watch a Christmas story on repeat for 24 hours, but because 2020 is so different, we just watched, we watched a bunch of Scrooge. Scrooge, <laughs> yeah. But with the Gold Coast dancers, like it was so bananas. I was like, this movie is great. I love that movie. We didn't, we didn't watch the whole movie, but I did show Skyly the final scene from that movie. Oh, yeah. On Christmas, because yeah. she didn't need to see it. She just stayed for Love that movie, though. I heard somebody saying something about pointy, something couldn't get the pointy trees, pointy mountains. All right, I need a, a critique. I'm going to show you. Hold on. <gasps> there we go. Wow. Perfect. You look yeah. great. Oh my, oh my god, you guys. Maybe a little more reflection on the middle mountain there. Like, uh, like if you were you, you needed to hold it back from yourself. Like sit back like six feet from it and look at it from a distance for a second. You'll see that you need like a little bit more reflections on that middle mountain. Yeah, that would be that my only good. criticism. I mean, though. It looks really good. It looks like that. you're ready for the next step. But if you're having trouble getting pointy tips on your mountains, I would say make sure you got your brush ringed out. Make sure you, you don't have too much paint on your brush. Yeah, that's my issue. I mean, that's what I have the wrong. I call it sharpening your brush, where you're kind of just like, you can even, if you're not afraid to get your fingers dirty, just while there's paint on there, just kind of squeeze out that extra paint or use a paper towel. <laughs> I like to get dirty though. I like to just get it out of my fingers. <laughs> and then paint, paint with your fingers. Go for it. As long as you're not getting messy to the point where your paint is dripping in your wine, you're all right. Oh. How did you make? Oh, never mind. What? I'm no, just... shut it out. How did I make what? Well, you have like this beautiful detail underneath some of the mountains in the water, and I all I made was a straight line. So, man. Oh. How did I do that? Yeah, yeah. Oh, see? Yeah. Like a... How did I do that? Um, um, I kind of just went like zigzag. I used the little, the thinnest part of my brush and kind of just, I like, kind of went like, doo -doo 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 -doo. like um, like an old school printer, like those dot matrices, now they just go back and forth. That's kind of what I did. And I just kind of let the, let the brush kind of just graze it as I'm doing it. Like touch it ever so slightly, just graze the surface of the canvas. So it's just, barely making a mark. So it's made a real thin, thin line with my my wide brush. Well, this will turn into something. I have a feeling. Yeah, Dan, do you ever look at someone's painting and just go like, wow, that's that's freaking terrible. Only, <laughs> I've only done that one time, actually, to be honest. <laughs> it has happened, though. Um, yeah, I don't know. She didn't, she really didn't want to be there. Oh, she, okay. she was like purposely making it look bad and there was just no there was no helping her oh. <laughs> it's the only time where i had a group photo where i actually photoshopped <laughs> out somebody's art too and in the words of my adorable baby sister she would say that painting sucks <laughs> <laughs> i can't even remember what we were painting uh it was that probably it was that bachelorette party um do i have it still is it here it was a challenge. It was definitely more of a challenge. The, the the lady that was getting married like purposely chose. She was she was an artist, so she purposely chose like a harder composition. Uh, and then one of her friends like she came late, like forty five minutes late, and you could tell she really didn't want to paint. And she was just mixing the the ugliest colors that you ever saw in your life. Like it was like the these ugly greens and you make me so spiteful, yeah. Yeah, she was doing it. She was doing it to be to be a snot. Yeah. You could tell. She, you could tell she wasn't trying because I mean, all it takes is just a little tiny bit of effort to make it look remotely like what we're doing. I mean, it didn't look anything like what we were doing. It was a hard composition. I'll give her that, but still. I hope she was happy with herself. Oh, where is that one? I'm, did I give that one away? I'm gonna have to look in the closet real quick. 
No, we're gonna paint. We're gonna paint some more first before I go look and show and tell on here. So we're gonna make some darks. What are you guys all painting? You guys all are still painting. I didn't give you any instructions. You're supposed to take a break and let it dry for a minute. Oh, oh I messed with the bottom part of the mountain. I know you're not gonna follow instructions. Julie, look at fantastic. The turds are turned into something else. <laughs> Got it. You 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 caught up real fast. Yeah. Your paints was... look. Your paints look really shiny. I'm sweating. <laughs> <laughs> you're getting into it. it it could be aerobic if you if you do it right yeah. like the way jamie and heather and candace are doing it on the up, upright easel okay. really work out some of the extra arm arm flab you know doing so oh, i'm happy someone said that because i was like man this is a workout <laughs> it is your arms do get tired after a while yeah and where i'm sitting in my living room the ceiling vent is blowing right on me it doesn't help so <laughs> Oh, it's probably not helping your dry time either. No. Um, so yeah, all the paints that I have, you know, I'm pretty close to the color I want here on my palette. So uh, does anybody not have brown or green to use? Or black, brown or green or black? Everybody's got one of those three? Cool, yes. awesome. Because then we are gonna make our darkest dark. So I'd like to have some of the existing colors that we have on our palette already some of these purples and dark brownish colors, but I want to take it one level darker. So um, to use this leftover color, this leftover dark purple that we have, using some blue and some red magenta, make the darkest color that we can out of what we have. And then adding probably, I would say the complement to whatever color that's there. And that's kind of hard to determine unless you have a color wheel or a Mr. Pipe, Mr. Paint Party on hand. I can tell you what the complement is. Um, but see, I got a really dark purple, so I know that I want to add the opposite of dark purple, which is dark orange or dark yellow, which is brown. So I'm gonna add brown to my, my dark purple to make an even deeper, darker color. And you can see that that's an even darker purple. Maybe a little, a little more brown, a little more blue in there too. I'm gonna to try to get it as dark as I can. What are we doing with this color? This is gonna be our main foreground color. So this is gonna be the main color of the trees, the branches. I don't want to use jet black because like where it where it becomes see through, it gets like a this icky looking um, appearance to it. I want to use like a like a homemade black, so to speak. Um, okay. So we're gonna make our darkest dark using the colors that we have on hand. What is I guess. If you have black, I wouldn't use jet black. I would just use like a touch of black and add it to my my purple to make a okay. deeper purple instead of going jet jet black with it. I almost dipped in my wine. Can you believe it? Yeah, I've, been I've almost dipped it into my whiskey. Like yeah, I, I got a red cup here for my water. That was <laughs> all right. So what do you got? Our dark is dark. I'm still mixing up. It's you know it's way darker than the brown that I had or the the purple that I had for my mountains here. But I'm just gonna keep adding a little bit more until I get to where I want. I want some brown, some more blue. There we go. Now it's not really looking like purple anymore. So where it's almost looking like you can't really tell what color it is anymore. It was even neutralized all the color in there. That if you were to add white to it, it would almost look like a neutral gray. Oh, See, now I'm starting to get there. I'm adding more blue and brown to it. There's just too much red in there. I had to kill my red. Dan, is this the last color that we're using or? Um, essentially, yeah. We might need two coats of it depending on how thick it is. But I do want it to kind of vary up. So we ended up with some natural variations in our foliage here. And we're gonna start at the bottom so we can be nice and safe when we test this color out. So I'm gonna start at the bottom and work my way up. And I should have about a half an inch down there that I can kind of play with this color. And you can see on my canvas, it, it almost looks black. I'm gonna go back to this camera here so you can see it close up. So that's pretty darn close to black. It's got a hint of purple to it, which is what I want. And I'm still using this big fat brush too, you'll notice. So I'm, I'm using, uh, I, just, I just laid down a stroke right there at the bottom. Then I'm using my, um, the narrow part of that brush and using upward strokes. By doing that, it's creating like little, uh, little like grass-like foliage there. And you can do that as many times as you want to till it gets nice and thick in that area. And that's hard for me to get at the bottom eighth of eighth. <laughs> so I'm gonna lift this up a little bit. Pull it back down. Oh, oh. Technical difficulties. Just lined up there. There, that way I can paint that bottom 
eighth of an inch. And now you can't see what I'm doing. Let me scoot that down just a smidgen. You can see my Skyly's got a nice My Little Pony to the left of my canvas there. Oh. That's Rarity on the side of her computer there. Rarity. She's getting really good at doodling. So I am filling in. So as high as you want to go with this, I'm going to go up to where I, I feel is. How do you get those sharp points? So I'm using, I had a nice sharp. Um, so here's my wide brush. When I hold it like this, you'll notice it comes to a narrow brush. So I'm using that narrow brush to make those sharp points. If you find that your brush is not doing that, it means one of two things. Either you got an old brush, which is probably not the case, or there's too much paint on there. If there's too much paint on there, all you got to do is just wring it out on your paper towel. I call this sharpening your brush. Once you get it nice and flat, add some pressure so it gets nice and pointy. You can see how pointy I can get my brush. Now that my brush, brush is nice and pointy, now I can go back to that point, uh, back to my palette and, and load it back up again now that I have a nice point to my brush. And that'll ensure that I get those nice sprigs, those nice pointed strokes. So that's what I'm going to do for the whole bottom. I'm going to fill mine in real quick. My paints are drying. So I'm filling in this bottom part real quick. And I'm going to add some texture to it. So we do want some variation in height too here. So it looks a little more natural. We don't want it to go straight across the canvas. So I'm going to have parts go up a little bit and parts go down a little bit. Just so it looks a little bit more natural. Maybe it goes up a little bit here on the side too. brushing that in make sure I'm covering my white spots that I left earlier. I left some blank spots in my canvas showing. I'm running out of dark color already, which kind of stinks. So make sure you have enough dark color to last it. Otherwise make some more. And I'm just going to throw a whole bunch of these little strokes going upwards uh -oh. <laughs> all over this thing. Mm -hmm. Did I hear a chuckle? I heard somebody chuckle, I think. Yeah, we were laughing. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> we're like, I don't know. Does this, does this look good? I don't know. It's a cake, right? <laughs> I gotta make some more dark color. So you gotta give me a second before I jump back into it, which kind of sucks because my stuff is like drying in the meantime. Um, but I'm making it some more darkest dark. Oh, I should have just used red and phthalo blue. Holy cow, that made a nice dark right off the bat. Red and phthalo blue. Boom. All right, let's add some more of that in there. And we can even vary up some of our brush strokes. We can even have like some little, I'm just using the quarter of my brush here, just touching it like a, like a little stamp. And that could be like um, little leaves coming off of another type of plant. I think it was Da Vinci that said, in any one square foot of nature, there's at least seven different kinds of wildlife or different kinds of foliage. So we really do want some different kinds of plants. We don't want it all to look like this grass stuff that I had showed you. We want some of it to, to come off a little differently. We want some of it to be like little branchy things. So we can just like touch our brush to the canvas and get some more branch-like uh, foliage coming up. Just, just to vary it up a little bit. So it's not all universally one thing the same going across. Maybe there's some flowers over here. What do you call these flowers? So again, I'm just using the, like the corner the corner of my brush and just touching it to the canvas, like a little stamp to make my little flowers and stuff. My little flowers and leaves. <laughs> Don't be scared. This hill needs a little more stuff. Let's put a little more stuff on this hill here. And in just a second, we're gonna start throwing in some trees. So hopefully you're starting to get a little more confident as you're working across with this knowing what your brush can and can't do and how you how thin you can make your lines as you're working across. Because in a second, we're gonna go, gonna go right across our beautiful sky. If you want to, heck, if you don't want to, you don't have to. <laughs> you can stop here. It looks pretty done actually at the moment. And kind of tranquil at, at that, in that same time. Um, Need more mountains. I really dislike my mountains. You dislike like mountains? Yeah, I don't know how to salvage them. Yours look so like water, like air, I don't know, like they're in the distance in a mist and mine are just more blobby. They turned out too blobby. Can I see? Yeah, hold on. Cute. <laughs> yeah, 
Can I just make it look like I have, um, you know, the cat's tail one? That's it? Yeah. Something like that. Can I just pause? Just the black part here. Okay. Keep it down there. I don't want to go to sleep. Oh. <laughs> Super cute. Like, maybe you can't tell on here. They definitely look better on camera. They don't look that bad. They really don't. Yeah. I mean, if you can mix that same color, you can do like a more maybe of a pointed just... pink, more of a, like a triangular peak on them. But, you know, that's unnecessary. It's not like somebody's going to be at that, look at your painting and be like, I was, I was at the, that mountain range and those mountains didn't look <laughs> We're painting a fantasy mountain here, so your mountains are a little more eroded than my mountains. It's not a big deal. It's erosion. This is a little erosion. Perfect. Can't stop that. Can't stop erosion. No, not at all. So a little more. I uh, I need some more uh, plant life over here on the side. I'm just gonna throw some more sticks. Here's some sticks coming up. You want me to tuck you in? Mm -hmm. Okay, you go upstairs and I'll come tuck you in. I'm gonna put some more flowers in the corner of my brush. Okay. These are roses over here. Can we see? Wild roses. <laughs> Dan, when you have a minute, you can go in closer. Yeah, absolutely. Love to. Yeah, you can't see it at all what I'm doing, can you? Mm -hmm. Here you go. <laughs> Oh yeah. So I'm just using my corner of my brush and throwing some little tips on these branches that I just threw. And then the branches themselves, I was just using the 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 long part, the skinny part of my brush, and just kind of stamping in branches. So that was that's what I did for my branch, using it as, like as lightly as possible, throwing in those branches. And then at the top of those branches, I was just putting like a little blob, using the corner of my brush. And those are my little flowers there. So I've got some flowers, I've got some grass, I've got some other branches, maybe I'm gonna make like some cattail looking things, I don't know. Ooh, Whatever your brush ends up making, if you start getting a unique angle at your brush, and you're like, wow, shoot, that really looks like a plant. Just keep using that same technique, really go with it. See how many of that plant you can make, spread them out, put some over here, put some over there. Just so it varies it up a little bit so they're not all the same. Maybe some little tiny dots, some bigger blobby dots. Look, bigger blobby dots end up looking like bigger flowers. Blobby dots. Little tiny dots end up looking like little little baby's breath, little tiny flowers. Ah! It's not my best work. These little groups of little, little clusters of tiny ones. If you want to, feel free to bring out a tinier brush. I know I'm using the same brush the whole time. I really like my wide brush. It holds a lot of paint. That's why I like it. But feel free to brush, bring out a smaller brush if you're more comfortable with a smaller brush. I like the bigger brush. I like the big cat one. I feel like this fat one doesn't run out of paint. It holds so much paint. So now, when after you've done a few of those and you feel comfortable, I'm at that comfortable point where I'm, I like my color. I, I got a feel of how the paint's kind of flowing off my brush. I know how overloaded and underloaded my brush is feeling. So I'll get my brush nice and sharpened. I'll wring out some extra paint here. Make sure I don't have too much paint in there because I do want a nice dark tree. So I wring out my extra paint and I go back to my darkest dark. And I'm gonna confidently make my first branch. And it could be wherever you wanna start, wherever you're feeling like it's the right spot. I think I'm gonna start with this evergreen first though. I got one, one very clear evergreen in the scene and that's about right here. Um, a lot of, it's a very French composition thing. I think I mentioned it in our Van Gogh thing last week to close the composition on the right-hand side. So to have a big tree or something really big and dark on the right-hand side, you'll find it's very common in um, impressionism. You'll find a big object on the right-hand side. Whereas last week when we were doing Van Gogh, the big object was on the left-hand side, which was very atypical of art at that time. So there's my main tree trunk. I want it to be a little thicker than that, but I really want to concentrate on making sure it gets skinnier as I'm going up. So like using less and less, less pressure. You can always go back towards the bottom and make it wider. However, you can't really go back up towards the top and make it skinnier. It's better to be confident and lay that down the first time. If it does get really screwed up and it ends up way too fat at the top, well, this is an evergreen, so we could probably rescue it on that sense. But if you really wanted a skinny line, 
the sky is probably dry enough to where if you had a clean, wet paper towel in your other hand, you, sh you should be able to use that as an eraser. Um, so if you're feeling non-confident, I would say start off with that in your right hand or your left hand, depending on whatever hand you use, um, your opposite hand to have a wet, clean paper towel, just in case you wanna wipe that line off right away that you can. So as I'm doing my evergreen here, I'm gonna do some branches coming off just so I know where, how far I'm going off this tree, where I want my branches to go. As I'm going towards the bottom, they get heavier, so they kind of bend downwards more. Are you okay? And I'm just flubbing in, kind of flubbing in where I want that tree to go. Not really concentrating on making it look like leaves until this next step, where I am still using that same big brush, but this time I'm pushing like straight down into my canvas. Pushing it straight into my canvas. Really, what I'm doing is um, dulling that tip. So when I was saying sharpen your brush, this would in a sense be doing the opposite. This is what I tell my preschoolers to not do. Don't be ruining my brush because those are those cheap tempera paint brushes <laughs> that we give preschoolers. Yeah, don't do this with your cheap tempera brushes because they'll, they'll just turn to crap real, real quick. But I am using, I'm just jabbing this acrylic brush into there, into that surface of the canvas and creating, um, these evergreen branches coming off of where I had them sketched in. And I'm using that darkest dark, and I might need two coats because it doesn't seem to be covering this mountain very good. But I kind of go with the direction of gravity. I and mean, we've all seen enough evergreen trees in our time that we can kind of see what, an, we kind of know what an evergreen tree looks like, right guys? Yeah. Yeah. They kind of grow like that. And yeah. really, once we get to a point where we're at this stage, a lot of it can be filled in and silhouetted. So if it doesn't really droop as good as mine does, or the needles don't look as good, we can really fill it in as almost a bold shape. Oh, you're over here. Fill it in as almost a bold shape. Oh God, I'm so far behind. And I'm not sure. I'm rescue that. No, you don't have to be. You know what, I, I have, I am actually recording this for you guys. And it's for you guys only, I'm never making it public. So. Even if you swore during break time, it's all good. Um, I'm just giving you guys the link so you can watch this again later and take your time later and watch it. If you if you feel like you're falling too far behind and wanna wanna retry or whatever, you guys will have this link to rewatch at any point in time. Oh heck, we could do it next year for your birthday, Jamie. And try Yay! <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, know, know that, that there's no reason to rush. You don't have to paint nearly as fast as I do. Can you explain how you make those leaves again? Yeah, sure, absolutely. So I have my one inch wide flat brush and I am literally like dulling the tip of my brush, just jabbing the brush straight into the canvas. So really like a non-technical way of painting, pretty much a, I, how I would tell all my students to not paint, like okay. all my yeah. elementary students, I should say, not painting like this because this is how you ruin, how you ruin brushes. But we're oh, doing I'm doing that, and is that how it's supposed to look? Do I have too much? Uh, let me flip to your screen. Hold on. Um, let me see. Let me see. Where are you? Hey, that's looking pretty good. Yeah, but like now, let your brush run out of paint, and really okay. use that. Just keep using the same brush to keep jabbing it in there. It starts off a little thick when you first have it on there. Like my first couple of dabs look like big blobs. But as you keep working that in there, as your brush starts run, running out of paint and as you start dulling the tip of your brush more, it starts creating more of that, that wispy um, evergreen look to the sides of the tree or to the needles. And I'm really kind of filling mine in too. You can see that as I'm doing that, look what happened to the tip of my brush. Now it's not a nice tip anymore. Now it's fraying all sorts of different directions. If I wanted to, I could sharpen it right back up again because it's a typical acrylic brush with um, acrylic the brushes bristles are actually made out of acrylic too so they're synthetic bristles that you can just squeeze right back into place they should if it's a good acrylic brush it should spring right back into place once we wring it out so i'm just doing dabby strokes taking my evergreen first because this is going to be the most challenging tree i think out of the bunch so i'm doing this bad boy first the rest of the tree should be a little bit easier technically as far as a brush stroke is concerned. So I'm kind of just filling the areas that I feel are too see-through. I know the bottom of the tree has got many more branches, so I'm making sure there's not too many holes that you can see through through the bottom of the tree here. Yes. 
This is bad. There you go. Does that look right? Does that look right, you guys? Mine. Look right to me. It's a little bigger than I wanted it to be, but hey. I'm into it. We're just gonna make it. Right. And I covered up one of my beautiful mountains that I had there. I'm way behind. I'm I'll try to throw a few more trees. Who's way behind? Here we are. All right. Well, take your time. Where are you at? I'm the tree. You're still treeing? Well, I'm still treeing. So we're on the same step, at least. Started yeah, it's nice. I'll slow down. I'll take a little break here before I start doing the um, the non-coniferous trees. What the heck is the name of the non-coniferous? What do you call the other kind of trees, guys? The ones that lose their leaves? Perciparous? Perciparous? No, that's not right. That's not it. Sorry. Oh, trees that are going to lose their leaves, June. Decidious. Deciduous. Is that right? Yeah, deciduous. Oh, deciduous. Deciduous. Yeah, we'll do the deciduous trees in a minute. Wow. Oh, I feel dumb. <laughs> I had no idea what that was. It took me a good minute. <laughs> <laughs> Come on. <laughs> Coniferous and deciduous. Is there any other kinds of trees? Is there is there ones in between those two, or is it just one or the other? One or the other. I think it's just one or the other. One or the other? Oh, what about okay. cactuses? Cactuses like something else, right? Oh, right. Yeah, well, that's a plant, right? Oh, right. That wouldn't technically be... Well, uh, I don't know. Cactus tree, right? That's what we say? I know. Some of them are, like, <laughs> super freaking tall. Those would be, like, cactus trees, right? Yeah. I'm Googling, just in case you guys are wondering. <laughs> <laughs> Always good to keep learning. Coniferous. That two main categories, deciduous, coniferous. All right. So what ones don't fall into those categories? Come on, there's got to be something that's like not part of the, you know, how platypuses legs. There's got to be one that doesn't fit in the category. Am I running it again too much? I know why, how platypuses lay eggs now. How or why? Oh, no, definitely how. <laughs> I know why. Why? I was like, well, that sounds interesting. But no, you don't have to, I'll Google it later. You can Google that on your own time, yeah. I got it. Yeah, so the consensus is it's just the two categories. There's nothing else. There, no other categories. But that, that still begs the question about cactuses. So again, I'll look at that up later. I'll, Google, I'll, I'll email you guys all about it later. All right. We'll have, another, we'll have another class about <laughs> botanical <laughs> stuff. Um. So you guys are fervently painting over there. Can I see anybody's? Can I see anybody's um, evergreen? I think I'm done. I wish mine was pointier, but it, you know, the trees come in all shapes and sizes. Hey, yeah, cool. Ooh, I like it. Mine's kind of like a blob. It works. It works though. It really, remember how I was saying it, how it closes off the composition on the right-hand side? It really like, it almost frames that part of it really well. So I like that aspect of it. You like built in your own frame. I'll have some, we'll just show in a second when we get this tree. How about Jamie's group over there? Over there. Anybody want to show and tell? Yeah, give, yeah. give me one minute. I'm just filling in the tree a little bit. Okay. Yeah, I'll show you mine. Yeah, let's see. Well, let's see go. Ooh, ooh, yeah, yeah. there we go. <laughs> My show. That was so good. Very even and symmetrical. <laughs> do you do something mathematical for a living? No. <laughs> no? What do you do? I'm actually just a stay-at-home mommy right now. So. Oh, okay. So organization is very much key then. <laughs> so that makes sense. That makes sense. I'm just trying to psychoanalyze a little bit. <laughs> just based, based on that, that painting, I could tell that you're a very organized, neat person. Oh, <laughs> right? Am I right? No. <laughs> no, you're not. Okay. Yeah. Well, and now you can see why I'm not a psychoanalyst and just a painter. Just thinking. Okay. Oh, there we go. Oh, that is a nice looking tree. Okay. Working on it. The Heather's? It's mine, yeah. Wow. Dang, you should be teaching this class. That's sure. like a real, that almost looked like you spray painted it. Are you cheating over there? Yes. Whoa. <laughs> Ooh, the artistic vibes are flowing in that household. Look at that. 
Dang, dang, dang. But Jamie's not showing off, so. No, I, I'm not even on the evergreen yet. Oh, oh, well, then take your time. We're, we're going to pace ourselves based on where Jamie is. Oh, that's very nice. Everybody, pace, pace yourself based on Jamie. Take your time. If you haven't paced, painted your edges yet, this would be a good time to do it. Yeah. In fact, I'm going to do that a little bit, too. Purple and, like, some dark colors. Yeah, I mean, it doesn't have to match exactly. Okay. Make very nice. Um, so guys, I still have some similar colors here in my palette. I might as well use them while they're still a little bit wet here. Bird on it. Yeah, put a bird on it. Put a bird on it. <laughs> Portlandia. <laughs> <laughs> Portlandia is best. <laughs> You've got a tote. Put a bird on it. <laughs> then a, a bird flies into their shop, and they're like, "Ew, get out of here! It's disgusting." <laughs> <laughs> True. <clears throat> Portlandia is funny. I think it's a show. I've never watched that. Oh, it's great. Is it like on great. Netflix? Um, on it? It's on Netflix, I think. <laughs> oh yeah, it's on the ind ID IDC or IFC or something. Mm -hmm. But I think you can find it on Hulu, probably. Or oh, I got Hulu. All right. Yeah. Yeah, very silly. They're like I'm always looking for new funny stuff. You know, like nothing has. I feel like nothing has been able to compete with The Office, like since The Office. I did do the Shit's Creek though. Shit's oh. Creek. That's a good one. Yeah. Oh my God, I am obsessed. Yeah. Yeah, very good one. You got it. Takes good. A, it takes a minute to get through the like yeah. in the first season. Everybody like it's trend. Everybody's like, oh, I don't know why people like this takes a minute then you get into it yeah episode. you have to give it like the first three episodes and then you're like glued yeah all shows are kind of like that though you gotta get used to the characters and yeah it's, it's very brilliant it's like even you know it's dan levy who is eugene levy's son who wrote it really yeah and you know how awesome eugene levy is i love eugene levy yeah so it's him and his wife is Catherine o'hara of course no way mm -hmm. so that is something you check out for sure. Which we just watched Come Alone 2. And wow, she's a bitch in those movies. Yeah, she was such a bitch. <laughs> <laughs> Jamie, did you see my picture I posted of what Angela made me? Oh my god, what did she oh the um, glasses that you got? Yeah, yeah. So she made me this ew COVID David from Schitt's Creek wine glass that I'm drinking <laughs> out of right now, actually. I did <laughs> Wait, is this ew COVID on it? Yeah, it's ew, ew COVID. COVID. <laughs> Levy's um, top of his head. You know how Eugene Levy is like all eyebrows? Yeah. So his son is that way, but a little more refined because he's fabulously gay and takes care of those eyebrows. All right. Oh, yeah. So, um, yeah. So that's so cute. I thought that was fun. He takes care of those eyebrows. Yeah, well, he's that. Uh, well, yeah. Because <laughs> he's gay. Angela was so worried about making things with her. her <laughs> that was a weird thing to say. <laughs> That's fine. Okay, well, this is something. Truth come together. Yeah. I'm a little bit la 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 la. A little bit Alexis. <laughs> I love it. Is this party rule? Oh, and then Twyla. Twyla is his sister in real life. That's right. Twyla, Levy, yeah. or whatever. Yeah. Nope. Not Twyla. I, I don't know what a real yeah. name is. I was upstairs, um, Sarah, I think. I was upstairs putting Jude to bed, and I heard you guys talking about Shit's Creek, and I was like, Shit's Creek! <laughs> <laughs> Hurry up, it's awesome. Yeah. Well, I'm gonna have to give it a try now. It's got the whole Levy family in it. I know. It's kind of interesting to me that Sarah Levy got that role. Well, she um, couldn't pull off Alexis. No, she couldn't. Well, that has to be a special person. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Annie Murphy is excellent. Yeah. And I love watching her do interviews because she's so not that person. So it makes no, me and she's like kind of quiet. Yeah, exactly. 
La, 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 la. <laughs> I love Dan Levy. Me too. I'm trying to watch that. Um, what is it? Home. What's the last happiest name? holiday or something? The happiest holiday. And I try. I'm trying, but I think I need to watch it with a snarky friend. Well, he's it's what, not. It's not very good. But yeah, I, I watched it. It's just. It's. But it, you're right. It's not very good. It's, and I'm the only redeemed. I'm not the only, but like he's the best part of it. Exactly. exactly. And I mean, Christian Stewart's in it, and I don't know how you feel about her, but I'm not that big of a fan. Christian Stewart. Yeah. Is that her name? Did I say her name right? Yeah, I, I wasn't mad at her. I thought she did. Is Dora still doing stuff too? She has to drop off the radar. I don't know. She's got a really good vacant face. <laughs> <laughs> she does. That is so true. She's phoning it in. You just need. You just need like to. Oh, okay. We just need. We need like a, a woman who's in a relationship who you like care about because she's just like nothing. Like fine. <laughs> she's a pair of pants. Put she's her a pair of pants. Put her <laughs> That's what she's there for. <laughs> I know. I, I keep, need a vacant face. I keep right. I keep trying to watch that happiest hot. Everyone's like, Jamie, you're gonna love it, and like. My friend Mike's like, you're gonna cry. I totally cried. I'm like, dude, I can't watch this. When did he cry? <laughs> I, Mike's always crying, I think. Yeah, fair. <laughs> Mr. Mike? Mr. Mike, yeah. He was like, I loved it. You're gonna love it. You're gonna cry. I'm like, I can't even watch the first. I'm not saying it isn't good. I just, I need to sit there with a snarky friend because I can't, like, I can't sit through Fuller House or, you know, like the, the campy stuff right now. I just, it's a little too, uh, I don't know. I need my entertainment to be a little bit more up in my face, I guess. But I'm still going to do it. I think it will be cute. So there you go. Again, the Dan Levy parts are the reason you're there. That's true. The rest of it, meh, it's fine. I like the representation. I mean, I want to spoil it. The only, like the part that's funny, it's like one part and I want to say it so bad. Just tell me, I'm going to watch it anyways and I don't need to, I mean, it's not a big deal. Go she ahead. Need to be, yeah. I don't need um, to. So the best part is like the tracking. Yes. <laughs> he like, He's and it's in the commercial, I think, so it's not really a spoil. Um, he is like on his phone and he's like, Hold on, I just gotta like track my friend, the guy I was with, to make sure that he like left. And she's like, What do you mean track? He's like, GPS. She's like, You GPS people? And he's like, Uh, yeah. And it's <laughs> just so funny. <laughs> oh, <laughs> I love him, I love him so much. I, I did not do it justice, so it'll be worth the watch. <laughs> I'm just taking any old color and fixing the top of these mountains. I just had to. Make it happen. If you feel like it has to happen. I have this thing where if I feel like I screwed up my painting, I just make it look like it has snow. <laughs> there you go. There you go. That's a good solution, actually. And then, it, you know, then it looks like, you know, snow. Make a lighter version, yeah, make a lighter version of that mountain color and say it's snow there at the top of the peak. Smart, smart. Mine is way more, uh, it's just so real. Mine's so like cartoony. I'm I good with it. I don't agree. I think yours looks awesome. Thank you, dude. <laughs> I mean, really, you know, I'm not like crying about it. How, how is that tree coming along, Jamie? Yeah, it's I'll fluffy. Like, I always like everybody. Is it? Oh, I see like it's yours. See, I made mine a little cartoony. It's okay. There's nothing wrong with that. I like cartoons. Well, that's the whole point, is that yeah. these are different tastes. I mean, that's mine. Oh, I can do whatever I want. Right. No, I love it. Yeah. A lot of my stuff turns out cartoons. I love it! I, I can't see Oh, it. I love it! Your grass looks amazing. I love how your mountains are outlined. I love that they're grayer. I love your tree. And, like, I love it. I so. want to see, like, a little silhouette of somebody sitting underneath the tree. <laughs> Maybe I should draw a picture of a cat under a tree. Yes. A kitty cat. Yeah. There's room for the penis. A tiger. It's just room for the penis. For so well, many times. It would, oh, we definitely make some penises in this next stop while we're making some trees. We could I haven't <laughs> lately. I really like the painting, so I'm like, oh, I'm not going to. Plus, I think I'm a lot more lit up when we go to the paint parties. Oh, and I'm like, woo! Let's just, you know. Put a Boy, that, you had some fun painting that. Yeah, I definitely did. Oh, fun. All right, so I am going to start doing the rest of my trees here. 
So I'm going to start with just their main branches. And I'm going to start from the bottom going on my camera and up super crooked. So let's fix that first. Crooked camera. I don't know how that happened. Close. Close. Oh, there we go. Now we're there. Money. All right. So start at the bottom and work our way up. That way they kind of naturally get skinnier as we go up and lessen pressure. Make sure you got a nice sharpened brush. Start from the bottom and work your way up. Remember, we can always make them thicker if you need to. But... Are we doing the dark color again? Say again? Are we doing the dark color again? Yes, I'm sticking with that same dark as dark. If you have to remix some more of it, go for it. But I, I found out my, my best solution in my case with the paints that I'm using ended up being uh, a mixture of about equal parts of phthalo blue and brown. And then I just uh, added a little bit of red in there to get rid of that uh, greenish tone that was there. Um, and it ended up being just this nice, rich, almost black purple that, you'll, that you see here in front of you. So I'm starting from the bottom, working my way up. We got a bunch of trees to do, so I'm just gonna start willy-nilly over here and I'm trying not to go straight up because trees kind of grow naturally crooked and letting it off naturally off my brush where my brush wants to stop. I'm trying to do as much of a perfect point as possible on these branches and letting it lay. So I'm gonna throw in all of my, <laughs> all of my main tree trunks first. Yeah, I need to freshen up my water. And then if you're not feeling confident, maybe um, your opposite hand, you can have that wet, clean paper towel ready to go. If you feel like your, your paints aren't flowing quite as well as mine, I am touching the surface of my water as I'm mixing my paints, kind of just to increase the fluidity of them so they're not so damn thick. Um, not to the point where they're, become, they're becoming watercolors or becoming so thin that they're dripping down my paper, but um, just enough water in there just to increase the fluidity ever so slightly so that they, they flow nicely off the tip of my brush. I'm going to do a nice, another nice tall one. Maybe this is going to be the tallest one right here. Come at about as high as I can go naturally before the paints kind of run off my brush. Oh, and then it'll be nice and crooked. I love it. Mm -hmm. Nice and crooked. The one next to it, I'm going to have kind of fallen over actually. So this one's going to be going this way falling off the side of my canvas. Again, you can go over the bottom of it and make it thicker if you need to. It's hard to make it go thinner. So really make sure your brush is nice and sharpened between steps. If you have to squeeze it out in between steps, do that, but make sure it's nice and sharp. Alternatively, a good way to make these strokes is if you have, if you have a liner brush, a lot of people prefer a liner brush, which would be, um, do I have a liner brush? I don't have one handy, but it is very similar to something like this, only the bristles are much longer. Like you'll, the bristles will go up at least an inch or an inch and a half. Um, and those are very good for making lines too. You see a lot of people using those in like graffiti art or when they're trying to make uh, like illustrations really quickly. But you can accomplish the same effect with the side of a flat brush. Mm. So there's the main structure of that, that main tree there. I'm gonna put, you know, I'm gonna go ahead and count. Let's see how many trees I'm gonna put in here. It is very thick, yeah. Six, seven, eight, yeah. Seven, eight, seven, eight, 13, 14, 16. 16 in that one, let me, how many am I gonna, 16 in that example. Let me see how many are in this other example. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. About 20 or so. Some are really, really thin in that other example though. The one that you have printed out, the one that I sent to you guys. There's about 16 in this one here. You can see that I accidentally went really big on this tree here, but um, you know, it doesn't bother me too much. I almost feel like I just, just make the rest of it a little bit thicker. This tree that fell over, this old dead tree. So about 16 trees all together. I've got four so far. So this is where you gotta have a little bit of patience to try to make them, try, to try to keep your consistency up. Don't forget to, to follow all those steps to kind of ring up your brush in between to uh, make sure they come to a nice point to have patience and slowly lift your brush off up when it comes to the end of your stroke. 
even on that 16th tree. So we're putting in all our main tree trunks. Oh, oh, oh. Lost my position there. There we go. I'm throwing all these guys as pretty much as thin as I can make them. Uh, okay. These lower trees are nice and skinny. This one's coming off the left hand side. Make sure you break the side of your picture plane. By that, I mean make sure some of those branches are coming off the side of your page. Breaking the edge of the picture plane is what we called it in art school. But uh, yeah, make sure, otherwise it looks too, um, I don't know, too contrived, too predetermined. The composition needs to be more organic. We're painting an out, outdoor landscape scene, so um, some of our stuff should organically leave the side of the picture. I don't know how thick that branch got as I left the side of the picture. So this tree is thicker. <clears throat> so yeah, happy little accidents. If you have a little mistake, you just make your tree a little bit thicker. Hopefully it doesn't get so thick to the point where it takes up the entire width of your canvas. But if that happens, it happens. It's all just practice. Although I did hear that some of you guys are gonna gift these to people. So, I mean, if, if it turns out bad, you gift it to somebody you don't like. <laughs> if it turns out good, you gift it to somebody. Can you imagine like giving, giving a really bad painting to somebody you don't like? Oh man, that would just be priceless. For a moment, that would be like, first of all, they're like, why are you giving me it? <laughs> We're not that close. They probably yeah. know you don't like them. Like, that's really weird. Like, you're as shitty as this painting. <laughs> <laughs> shitty painting. Enjoy. I just, <laughs> I just donated to the Salvation Army and maybe see what price tag they put on it in a couple days. <laughs> <laughs> see how much it's truly worth? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Does that work? <laughs> All the time, because I just leave guilt free. Like, oh, well, someone will love it. <laughs> <laughs> somebody, yeah, somebody will like it. There's a, a, to each his own, right? <laughs> Some art collector might look at it and be like, oh, this has got to be made by somebody famous. Yeah, it's a Banksby. <laughs> look, how unique, look how unique it is. It's got to be. Yeah. Julie Wayne, Fancy, fancy. <laughs> Local artist. I've got the majority of my tree trunks. Maybe just a couple more tree trunks here on mine. I don't know if you guys, how you guys are doing. Are you, are you making progress about the same as me? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Is it is it coming? Is it flowing off your brush nicely? Are your trunks flowing off nice? No, I'm like, oh. Yeah, not too thick. Mine are pretty thick, but I'm I don't hear. I mean, I don't hear any swears coming from you guys, so that's a good sign. I'm doing really well. I usually swear a lot, so. Well, everyone. <laughs> I'm gonna make a couple like really thin ones, just to kind of vary vary the um, the width of them. A couple of baby trees here. And those baby trees, they really like to come up from the side of their bigger trees because they're laying seeds right next to the big trees. So there's gonna be a lot of babies next to bigger trees. I'll put a couple of babies over here. <laughs> oh, remember what Da Vinci said, that they're all different kinds of trees, too, that they're not all exactly the same. I think that's one of the things I don't like about this example is that all the, all the leaves kind of look the same. Um, today, I'm going to try to think about using maybe a different technique on some of the different trees' leaves so they, they end up looking maybe a little different than each other. So it all looks like different trees in my scene here. I'm liking the number of trees I have. Maybe just one or two more over here on the left-hand side. Mine just are like fat trees. They're all fat? Yes. A little bit. They're like fat, but also not very um, 
the color is not, it's not as saturated as I want. All right, all right. I have a bad, maybe I'm using the wrong brush, but I only have what I got. Well, feel free to experiment. Try some other brushes. If you have a line brush, go for it. So now at this point, I feel like I got all my chunks in there. Now I'm just going to branch off. Just branch off and make some branches. So I'm just going to try to make sure that I am thinner than my tree trunk as I'm branching off. And another thing I'd like you to keep in mind as you're making trees is that they're all different kinds. So because um, one easy way to determine different species of trees is the angle that the branches come off. Um, each species have like a specific angle that the branches all diverge from the main tree trunk. So some of the branches I'll have coming off at like almost all acute angles and some of them I'll have maybe uh, being more symmetrical um, in different angles just so I can have some semblance of different trees in there. Not that I know what all the different, I mean, all I know is the difference between coniferous and deciduous. I don't know that much about trees, but I do know that the branches from different species of trees come off at different angles. So I'm going to try to vary the angles of my branches on some of my different trees. This first one, I'm going to try to do like acute angles. And I'm trying to make it a point that all my branches are at least thinner than the main tree trunk. Some of these branches are just going to come up and go like parallel with the original tree. I know some trees grow like that. They come up and then just go straight up. So that's what I'm going to do on these couple trees right here. I'm almost letting my brush do what it wants to naturally as I'm, as I'm creeping upwards. Sometimes it wants to bend to the left. Sometimes it wants to bend to the right. Try not to force it straight upwards. Now that branch came out a little thicker, so now I gotta make my tree a little thicker. That'll happen once in a while. But again, we can always cover up with more, more, uh, more leaves, more foliage to cover up uh, those accents if we want to. This trunk that kind of fell over. Oh, uh oh, thank you. Oh, God, yours too. <laughs> oh, my God, mine looks like a third grader did it. No, oh, you. Oh, no, oh, sorry. <laughs> I brought the goods, guys. I made puppy chow for my birthday, and it was everything. Oh, I want some. Oh. I've been actually dreaming about puppy chow since Christmas, like like when making Christmas cookies before Christmas. Uh, I was like, oh, all I want is puppy chow. I don't want these cookies. Mm. <laughs> yeah, I have Christmas cookies. I want puppy chow. I made it too, actually, but I just finished it. I just ate the whole bag. <laughs> well, I, didn't, I mean, puppy chow comes through. People were like, is it for the dogs? I was like, no. No. Oh, you know what you Annie know, you know. For. And you Annie know. just bought a plethora of Klondike bars. I think she bought every different flavor of Klondike bars that they had at the store. <laughs> Yum. Because Skyly had never heard of them before, so she had to uh, show her what they had. The full, How old are your kids? The full gamut. Um, I just have my one. She's 11. It'll be 12 in exactly a month. Nice. 11, Jan. Oh, my God. No, it's so old. No. Yeah, eleven-year-olds can definitely stay up late. It's true. <laughs> yeah, you know, some of her friends have like a really animate bedtime. Like, get them in bed by eight thirty-nine. I, I, just, she's just never been like that. I mean, I don't know. She's just, you know, every kid is unique, and she. she... I I teach fifth grade, and every kid is unique. I have kids who go to bed at like ten o'clock, and then I have kids who have bedtimes that are like eight. You're totally right. Right, she goes to bed when when she conks off the night. When she's <laughs> I know. I I got a feeling it's partially due to the screen activity, that blue light coming off the screen, keeping the brain active for way too long. Yep. That's why I'm wearing my glasses. I have to wear these. Otherwise, it gives me a massive headache and I cannot go to sleep. 
Oh no, really? It's oh, see, that's yeah. terrible. Yeah. Um, I know they got monitors like specially made now too, where you can block out the blue light too. Yeah. You know, so you, to prevent those migraines from happening. But you know, kids nowadays they gotta they're gonna have to thrive on technology. You know, every job as they get older is gonna be on the freaking computer. So yep. I, I I almost don't feel bad giving her so much computer time. But I was I was previously a teacher too. So then on the other hand, there is the part of me that says you know. <laughs> Doing more creative things outside of computer time is, is good for them. It's all about balance. I, my kids spend one whole day on computers and technology. Awesome. Then, you know, there's that day they don't spend it at all. Like, it balances out. <laughs> also, you got to survive. My kids are four and five, and there's just days where mom and dad are not going to do anything with you, and you can do whatever you want. Yeah, we <laughs> just need a freaking minute. But you know what? I, these, there's a lot of these scary apps out there. We just had to get rid of Roblox. There was another one on there just recently. This Among Us. I don't know if any of your kids are playing Among Us, but yeah. there is some freaking- My students play it nonstop. There are some creepy adults on there that will just yeah. say the rudest things to children. Really? It's so disheartening. It's just like any app, and these app developers all have good intentions. They're just game developers that are like, oh, it'd be a really cool feature to have a chat in our game. Yeah, I'm thinking that you know, as soon as these perverts find this out, there's like a thousand perverts on the kids apps, and Ew. that it's very <laughs> you know. yeah. So we stopped playing Roblox. We didn't. We never took on Among Us because I saw how bad that can get before we even started playing. My kids play Roblox. I didn't know that. Yeah, there was. I, one well, game. my kids don't even know how to type yet, so I think I'm okay. But that helps. That helps a little bit, or not knowing how to read even. But uh, there was one, there's, you know, there's games inside of Roblox. There was one game that was called, like, Kidnap Me. I'm like, oh, holy oh, shit, that's a red flag. Oh, gee. Oh, oh. Like, you kidnap me, and then I'm going to kidnap you. And then you kidnap me. And it's like, oh, okay, so where does the line draw into real life here? Like, it's not, let's, let's yeah. just not play this game anymore, okay? Oh, my God, that's scary. I just play my restaurant. <laughs> like, I don't know how to play Whatever happened to Cooking Mama? No, and I, have, I tried, and I'm like, what is going on here? I can't do this. I am an old person. <laughs> <laughs> I can't even hang. <laughs> and then I was like joking with my husband. I was like, because my kids, my students will share the Among Us chats mm -hmm. or codes, I mean, in the chat for Zoom. Yeah, and I'm so always like, you that, can't right? do that, you know, like yelling at them. And I'm like, one day I'm just going to join their Among Us and play with them and destroy them all. And my husband goes, <laughs> you're not going to win. <laughs> oh, I've been my exact same thought process and also yes you are not going to win like <laughs> it's wild it's like they play 24 7 and you're terrible you're not going to win I'm like you're you're right I'm you're not right. there's no point in trying so creepy also I'm thinking that's borderline inappropriate for me to join their among us but I only want to do it to be like Look at now you're playing with your teacher, you they idiots. Don't put it in the chat. Right. Yeah. <laughs> so I'm doing some of my teeny tiny branches. You notice that I kind of did this one in the middle, more symmetrical. These guys have like branches that kind of go run parallel with the, with the tree trunk. Um, this one and these guys on the left hand side, I was just kind of doing acute angles coming off of each branch. Um, not getting too horizontal with my branches. And now I'm just going through and having some fun touching up my ground around my, around my trees. Put a little extra foliage around like where the tree trunks are. I want to have plenty of, plenty of stuff down here, plenty of plant life. <laughs> Branches are tricky. The branch, I mean, it seems like when we did the raven and they have an issue. Like, but there was just the one. Yeah. We're doing 16. <laughs> <laughs> it's just a lot of patience, really. It's a lot of patience making all those little branches. And just making sure, making sure your brush is sharpened, too. Making sure your brush is not too overloaded. And if it does get to the point where you feel like it's not coming to a point anymore, to wring it out on a paper towel. And, and to dab it again. That's, that's really where it starts going awry is when your brush starts getting too loaded up with paint and, and the branches start getting a little too thick. Thank 
interesting pictures. Stuff like that. There's a guy on the screen there watching upstairs that's like, Look at my muscles, and then I have another head coming out of the head of my muscles. What? Oh my gosh. Watch YouTube. YouTube. It's a wild place. Oh no. Did we lose Michelle? Did she drop off? Uh oh. Yeah, she might have. Oh, okay. Annie said she might have been taking care of her kids. Oh, the boys? Yeah. Well, this is coming along. Hopefully yours is coming along too. My mountains are really disappearing behind that layer of trees and all that. Yeah. They're there though. They're still there. Um, I'm going to go through and start. I really kind of like it without the leaves, but I'm going to go through and start throwing some leaves on it in just a second. But I'm going to let you guys tree for a little bit. In the meantime, I got my lovely spritzer bottle. I'm gonna spritz my palette so my colors kind of stay a little bit wet, maybe, hopefully. Awesome. Cool, cool. Are you going to be painting? I might end up using a different brush for my leaves, actually. I've gone this whole time on that one inch wide brush, but I think I might change it up for my leaves just so it's easier to dab a little, um, lots of little strokes. That way I can almost just stamp, stamp my leaves in there. What do I have here? Or if I have a rounded brush? What kind of brushes do you guys have? You got a lot of stuff to choose from or no? A little bit. Yes. I've got, do I have a rounded brush over here? I got a whole set. All right. Oh, wow. Yeah. Yeah, the full gamut. I like was it Christmas gift? Yeah, like I have a few. This whole nice set. I have a few. This one, this is uh, this is why you don't buy expensive brushes right here. Here's my here's my eighty dollar brush that I've never used. Um, yeah, <laughs> exactly. Yeah, yeah, you got perfect brushes there. Those are all good. Those are the, the right kind too. Well, you said you went to the recommended supplies list. I'm just looking for a rounded one. I don't have very many rounded tip brushes, so I might be S O L. How do you know like if they're rounded? Rounded. Rounded. It's like, it's like an oval on the top, like a half oval shape. Like this? Like who? Wait, flip. I gotta flip my screen. Hold on. Who's holding one up? Yeah, just like that, Julie. Okay. Exactly. That'll be good for leaf leaves. And I, you know, I kind of want a couple different shaped leaves, so I figure a couple different shaped brushes would definitely come in handy. Would that this work? Because these aren't rounded, right? Let me see. What do you got there? No, that fan one's more for blending. I would use your smaller flat brush. In fact, I don't have a rounded one, so I'm going to be using the same kind you are. Um, so like uh, this guy here. Okay. A shorter flat brush. I might use that one, and I'm trying to find something different. I've got this other guy, too. I've got like a normal pointed one over here, too. Um, Michelle's trying to show me something. Yeah, Michelle. Yep. Actually, I got two different ones. Yeah, as long as we got two different ones, because they're going to make clearly two different um, shapes when we go to stamp on our leaves. And we want lots of leaves real fast. So we're gonna, we're gonna use- Michelle K is gonna come on and watch. She's a little bit late. She's actually the art teacher at our school. So- No way, she can, make awesome. it, she can make it on her own time or something else. Yes, I'll share the link. Where, who has her name? Um, Michelle K, she's coming on. Okay, cool. I used to be an art teacher myself. I was the art and computer teacher. It was actually, it's kind of a bittersweet story. I, uh, I taught for about eight years. I was bounced around uh, the Catholic school system a whole bunch. I was in Wilmette, I was in Oak Park, or uh, Forest Park, um, Des Plaines, and I finally found my home in Forest Park. I finally made it five days a week instead of being at bouncing around at different schools. Yeah. Um, yeah. And I was art and computers full time at that five day a week school, and it was fantastic. And I, and I finally found my home. I felt like those kids were my family because the art teacher gets to see the same kids year after year. Yeah, right, Whereas, right. You know, The other teachers change up every year. So, you know, and, and art is one of those subjects where kids are really allowed to be, be free yeah. to be themselves. They don't feel pressured that they have to take a test, you know? Um, I, and I really felt like I had a home there and then the school closed. Oh, so, no. You know, I thought this was going to Unfortunately, go nobody wants to start you on the eighth year pay rung. And uh, I was just scrambling for a job, so I decided to pave my own way. I became a web designer. Um, I just started doing this, and uh, I do my own art, like commissioned art on the side too. But I, man, I loved teaching. It was it was the best. 
And what's really even cooler is- You gotta tell the story when Michelle comes on because she's looking for a new job. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's hard, it's hard to pave your own way. That first couple of years were tough. Well, but... teaching in COVID is a whole nother thing. Yeah, I know, I know. Struggling. Uh, Janine, Michelle and I are in close contact daily about everything. And I got, we all got, I think we all got medical paperwork, right? Yeah. yeah. I mean, can't they yeah. out a way to just, just, just cancel school forever? Yeah, at least for now. I'd love to go back. That's fine, but like, come on, man. I just don't understand why everyone is so divided. Like, we're all human, and no, like, why can't people like realize that? But what ifs? Yeah, agreed. No, oh, this, bo- this is bomb is just happened is scary. If that has anything to do with it, political wise, I have a feeling it does. It's a it's a hundred percent political, and it's a hundred percent bullshit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah they definitely have well, a way to keep us all in here. and i are in district 25 which is one of the only districts in the northwest suburbs that decided not to go on an adaptive pause at all in yeah. fact oh. you're welcoming every single child can come back january 19th four days a week our um our board the so yeah. what happened was there was they a decide that, they should change. decide to open restaurants at the same time really um there was a regime change in our board and it's interesting because we had like the most liberal guy had to retire for medical reasons and then um the most conservative guy found that to be his in and he this is all speculation but he got um one of his friends essentially to be on the board so now he gets past well, Riches, every time he's like, Gina, what do you think? Because he totally got Gina to be on the board. You know he did. Oh, gross. Because now he, it's split. The board is split four to three. Four being like, the guy is like for school choice. Like he doesn't even believe in public education. It's crazy. What? Oh, we, we struggle with, with that particular board member because uh, we, we are having trouble understanding his motivation because his children are at the high school. So why, why are we doing this? <laughs> you know what I mean? It's he like, is a Trump supporter <laughs> who doesn't believe in science. So, like that uh, scene. It's like this. More than once, I have written him an email, and then he has essentially quoted me and spun it the Republican way. Ah, how annoying! Yikes. It's lots of fun. Yeah, that's why you don't engage that jerk off again. Don't do it. I just write. I write to the whole board, you know, and he'll take what I say. Like I said, you know, it's important to be a flexible thinker. I teach my students to be ah! flexible ah! thinkers. Yeah. And I said, it's important to look at data and science and use it appropriately and change minds when evidence is like brought in front of you. So yeah. he said, it's at the board meeting, he didn't quote me, of course, but he said, um, it's important to adapt to changing data and to be flexible. And so for that reason, I know one of the, um, one of the metrics said that 12% was, 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 where it gets scary. So let's change our 8% to 12%. I was like, you dick. That makes sense. Let's be flexible. Let's be flexible. I was like, he's very smart. I was like, you fucking prick. Yeah, yeah. I thought it was a rolling, I thought it was a rolling average of 9% in my district. And they're, they're doing the adaptive thing come the 19th. So I don't know. We'll see. But I I feel like it's very hypocritical for, for the school district to be able to be open and the city to say that restaurants and whatnot need to be closed because that's it's indoor, that's recirculated air. That's the whole reason we're not doing restaurants. Agreed. Agreed. All right. So for these leaves, guys, all I'm doing, I'm using my. Um, if you've got a, a different size shape brush, it's all good. I'm using my quarter inch flat brush, and what I'm doing is I'm laying my brush down on its side, on its small tip, right on the corner of that tip. <laughs> And I'm just releasing. So I'm just laying it down, putting pressure on it, and just releasing that pressure. So it comes off with kind of a, a nice tip to it. And I'm gonna zoom into my canvas so you can kind of see that happening. <clears throat> and we got Michelle. Hi, Michelle. Other Michelle? <clears throat> Michelle T. Nope, not Michelle T. Michelle K. 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 
Where is she? She was here for a second and then she disappeared. She must have had a bad connection. Oh no, this is Michelle T is back, right? For a long Michelle time. Michelle T is yeah. back. Yeah. Michelle Casper. Sorry. Casper Zach, we're looking for. Nice pronunciation. First try. Hmm. We went to school with a Casper Zach. He would be very proud. We, we went to school. We went to school with a Casper Zach, didn't we, Jamie? Uh, oh, I don't know. I'm just Maybe not. That tall guy, wasn't that tall guy Casper Zach? Oh, the tall guy. You know the one. That tall guy and his girlfriend died. No. Oh, blow it. No, girlfriend. No. Oh my god, my brain. Uh no, I'm not too Um oh that's Kapersky, damn it. Kapersky, yeah, yeah. I had such a crush on him in middle school. <laughs> I really did. Uh what's his name? Greg. No, with only two Oh, Liza, my Liza? Solana. Liza? Yeah, Liza, yeah. Liza. Where'd you guys oh, go? Everybody's dropping. Main West. Everybody's going to bed? Main West? Hold on. No, just what city is that in? That's Blaine's. Blaine's. Gotcha. Is Park. it Main East that is in Park Ridge? Which one's in Park Ridge? Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Well, it's funny because we say we, we were from high school together, but really we met on stage. We met in E-Wing where you were a performer. You did, I think it was more like V-Show really is where we clicked. Oh yeah, because I was I was the one that was doing I was the nerdy guy that was doing the like in between sessions that announced the acts. And yeah, I think I did that for Orcasis too. weren't you at Orcasis as well or no? Yeah, yeah. So yeah, we were totally on stage probably multiple times together. We always had so much fun. We laugh a lot. God, I wish I you know I haven't been on stage since I had my little one, but I really desire to. I mean, Mr. Paint Party in a way is a way for me to get back into the limelight. This is like improv for two and a half hours, but um, I really want to get back on the stage. I was doing a little bit of community theater before before Skyly was born, and I man, I love it. I miss it. That's so. Awesome. Are you all of Mr. Pain Party? I am. Yes, I am the the one and only Mr. Pain Party. I had a couple, <laughs> uh, had a couple college friends that I used to work with, but they they didn't do nearly as much stuff as I did. <laughs> um, so I rebranded as, as Mr. Pain Party and kind of took this the show solo. But my wife helps me out considerably a whole bunch with marketing and, and running the Annie? And, Yeah. Nice. She's over here by my side, my right hand. Aww. Always helping me out off camera. I need my black, I keep stealing them. Cool. So I am very slowly just dabbing my brush, my um, leaf. Ooh, I just totally put a little dot in the middle of the sky, sort of off. Oh, great. Michelle can catch me right as I'm swearing at my canvas. It's fantastic. Hi, Michelle. Welcome to the party. Oh, she was here for a second. Fast enough to get on, and then she dipped again. Oh, she must be having issues. Some connection issues. Son of a gun. I thought I was having issues about 6 o'clock, and I started to panic a little bit, and then I realized my router was unplugged. <laughs> I kept clicking the wrong button and being like, this doesn't work. And then finally I saw the email with the Zoom link and I was like, oh. Oh, there it is. It's <laughs> very good. It didn't even turn around. Uh-oh. Keep doing that. Guys, do that. So I'm very slowly just throwing in my leaves on these couple trees over here. No. I'm, gonna, I'm gonna switch brushes in a little bit and start putting them on my other yep. trees too. Cheddar Bear Creek soup with like ooh, um, Toronto bread. Oh, she's she's trying to switch her account so she's not on the work account and it keeps going back to work account. Oh, what a pain. <laughs> oh, just tell her to go on the work one. <laughs> yeah, we're not sharing. We're only sharing this. Chris, I don't give a crap what Michelle K is doing on the weekend. Do you know what I mean? Oh, I know. And this is like really kind of PG, I'd say. I agree. <laughs> I had actual like friend parties on ours, and I was like, "Well, is anybody in communication, direct communication with Michelle trying to get on?" Yeah, she she said that she's just trying to switch her Gmail account, so it's just her realizing she's on the re wrong one and, and okay. exiting, and then trying again. So she'll I was gonna that. say, like, instead of trying to click on the link to copy and paste it into your browser when you're not on your your Gmail, your logged in browser. <laughs> Sometimes that helps. Oh, I would have just left it. 
I'm gonna try not to overdo this. I, I envision this scene to be in like mid, like end of fall, like so the leaves, most of the leaves have fallen off. I have totally overdone it. If you overdone <laughs> it, it's fine. There's this midsummer, it's all good. But I want to be able to see through my mountains. Hey, if you want to cover up more mountains, make more leaves. Go for it. But I'm going to change brushes now because I'm going to change over to this other tree. So I'm going to do my brush strokes just a little different. They might end up looking similar, but we'll find out right now. So I'm using my fat pointed brush now, this one, this guy right here. It's still a synthetic brush. It looks like real hair. They made it look like it's like it's from an animal, but it's still just synthetic bristles. These are, I actually really, really like this brand. This is from Michaels. They call it Simply Simmons. So it's got the white shaft, the, the black barrel, and then the bristles that look like real bristles. Look like they're from an animal, but these are synthetic bristles and they're actually kind of cheap. They're only $2.99 a brush. Sure, I'm telling you. That's why your card was so annoying. It's like my humor is only of the fifth grade boy. Yeah. Um, I feel like this is inappropriate, but Ready. there are a lot of sexual innuendos in a paint party. Agree. Okay. I, I just want to say that's what she said like 50 times. Why don't you? Just do it. <laughs> Go for it. When, when Dan said chef, they went, <laughs> chef. <laughs> Exactly. Got to. So this one's ended up making up like lots, lots more tinier leaves. So I'm just gonna go with the tip of this brush and make teeny tiny leaves all over this guy here. Just the tip. Just the tip. <laughs> Don't forget to cover the shaft. <laughs> I should have brought way more here. Take way more. I I'm like running out of dark color, which is unfortunate. So. I have more than my leaves keep getting smaller and smaller. But you can you can leaf on this thing until the cows come home, really. I mean, uh, you can put as many leaves on this thing for, for days. You can just keep going and make more and more leaves. Go for the tens of thousands, you know. But I'm gonna stop somewhere in the hundreds range, just so they look full but not too full. <laughs> I'm going to concentrate on the tops of the branches. This is so exciting. Thank you. It's great. Ah. Oh my God, so great. I'm going to make some more dark color. Unfortunately, I ran out of color. But I have successfully made it through just about a whole nother paint party and only used one palette. How did I do it? I don't know. <laughs> but usually I use like four or five plates and today I did not I figured it out I got this fancy like Bob Rossian palette I wasn't a fan of this, this style until recently and if you have not tried this style I highly recommend it it's very comfortable and this big spot in the middle this big flat spot is really essential to mixing colors because you're mix mixing just a thin thin layer of paint Whereas on plates, you have no control, or if you're trying to mix it into these big uh, containers, these buckets here, it's really hard to change the color because you're mixing so much paint at a time. Whereas on this nice flat, thin surface, um, it's making a nice thin, thin, thin pile and spreading it out. And I can really easily change the color with just another dab of color because it's such a thin pile. I mean, it's not even like an ounce of paint. So really quickly, I can make a new color or even close to the same exact color because my pile is so thin. So yeah, try out, try out some different palettes, try out different brushes next time you paint. I'm just doing like, oh, is, uh, like they look like. Some of these little tiny branches need some foliage too. We got, we got Michelle back. Hopefully she's on for more than a millisecond. Ah! Oh, Michelle, hello? Hi. Hey, how are you? Uh, you know, technology is a little confusing. I know we're all in <laughs> our 40s here. We were just talking about that. Not Michelle. No, Not Michelle. Not Michelle. Michelle's young. Just well, you have, no excuse. you have no excuse then. <laughs> I'm not 40 either. No, Julie's young. <laughs> I know. <laughs> You're just a baby too. I'm a baby. You're a baby too? I can tell by your dimples. No. Oh. My cousin's adorable. 
That's on my mother's side of the dimples. <laughs> Uh-oh. <laughs> <laughs> so Michelle K, we were saying that you could, uh, if you wanted yeah. to, you don't, you don't have to try to catch back up right now. You don't have to try to try to paint the whole thing. I'm gonna email you guys all a link. Um, not not today because it's gonna take a few hours to upload it to YouTube. So probably sometime tomorrow, maybe tomorrow night, I'll email you guys all the link. Um, so you can do this again or do it in your own time or redo it. You can paint this whole thing. You're a professional, just hammer it out. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Michelle, you're an art teacher, right? I know, I'm like dying to see everybody's. You got this. Okay, we'll, do, we'll do a little preview. Did you do a K through eight then, or? K through five. K through five? Very nice. Big kids, then. Oh, you just don't have big kids at your school. Yeah, no, we just have kindergarten through fifth grade. Okay, that's cute though. You get all the littles. <laughs> yeah. I love it. And then, and then when the kids are acting a fool, Michelle comes to me and goes, hey, do you know this kid? And I go, <laughs> And you come and save the day? And I come save the day. I'm like, did you yeah. try this or this? Yep. Did you redirect? Did you redirect? Did you do planned ignoring? <laughs> did you try making a chart? Did we do a chart? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Planned ignoring is where you don't reprimand them for every single thing they do because some kids do things constantly. So you just have oh. to pick and choose which ones. Uh, I'm a professional at that. <laughs> yeah, dude. Right. Oh my gosh. You saw my messy house. Yeah, that was good. Show that again. I want to see it again. I, know, I was trying to see your picture. I didn't even look at the background. Do you yeah, like my makeup? I love the lipstick. It's very like gold. I'm surprised that like, it's very uh, opaque. It goes with our painting. It's very purple. It's a uh, sparkle. Okay, I'm gonna show you mine now. Okay. Ooh, Ooh hey, that fiery sky turned out freaking fantastic. Wow, that looks awesome. Yeah, that's great. I like it. I really do. I just don't. I don't. I wish my uh, evergreen was a little bit more um, less bushy. Less bushy less bushy like I wanted it more pointed and thin at the at the top okay yeah, everybody's got their preference in evergreens somebody will look at the evergreen and say that's the exact kind that I want so I mean I, it's you know I'm I gotta be a critic of my own work some people that. like those Charlie Brown style ones you know I'm really proud of myself because I've never done this before you did it Believe it or not, I don't know how this, we've been having so much fun that two and a half hours have gone by already. So we should all be approaching the end of the road of our paintings here. Um, Michelle, if you want to start, I'd love to see what you come up with after the class. If you yeah. want to follow along with the link after uh, the YouTube link, uh, we'll send it to you too. But I want to see what everybody turned out with. Um, and I'm going to, the, the party officially ends at 930 is when the Zoom goes, but uh, it doesn't cut us off. Thank God, otherwise it would cut us off already. Um, so I'll just keep this on until you guys are ready to, to cut it out or ready, ready to show me what you got. Um, but I think I'm, I'm just about at a stopping, stopping point. I mean, I can, I can go all night and put more and more leaves on this thing. But uh, I think that's just about it as far as instruction goes. Um, if you want to work for 5, 10, 20 more hours on this, go for it. <laughs> but I'm just about wrapped it up. I feel like it went real fast. What do you guys, how do you feel? That was not really quick. That was so much time. And next time I'll be on time. Don't worry. <laughs> or like me, I thought it was on the 29th. I put the money. another one. I know the 29th, it's not on because that's a Tuesday, which I guess whatever. Uh, well, I was thinking, well, this is a weekend night, but it's all weekdays. It's okay. It's all good. They're all blended together, together now at this point, aren't they? Birthdays are trying oh. yeah. Best things in life are free. <laughs> so remember, while you still, as we're reaching the finish line here, while you still got all your colors to sign your name on it yeah. before you forget, make it official. Oh, yeah, I love you. <laughs> you did not feel so, proud. I was like, you know what? <laughs> yeah, I did not sign that one. I'm probably going to use like a lighter color and sign it on top of my dark over there. So I'm going to use like white, maybe mix it with that yellow. 
<clears throat> like try to make that original color that I had on my. Uh, sign with a paintbrush. Yes, sign yeah. with a paintbrush. Of course, sign with a paintbrush. What are you doing? Carefully. Of course, you got to sign with a paintbrush. No, don't sign with a sharpie. It'll look weird when you're done. <clears throat> Do your um, fancy calligraphy, Janine. With a paintbrush, I can't even do it with a pen. <laughs> so find your nicest, <laughs> find your pointiest brush. It works just like a pen. I did it. You hold it just like a pen. You use it just like a pen. Aww, and sign nice. your name on there. It, I mean, it's not going to look exactly like your pen signature, but it should resemble it. I like the bushiness in your tree. Thanks. <laughs> of course you like a good bush, Michelle. <laughs> I love that. I love the bushiness of the tree. I got such a stupidly long last name. I hate it every time I sign it, but there it is, it's my, my stupid just, last name. I do like a K in a scribble because I hate signing mine too. I got yeah. a K last name also. Totally, a K in a scribble. K in a long scribble though, unfortunately. I feel good, it's cartoony, but I love it. I think it's totally defined, yeah. I love it. I don't follow directions, I love it. Sorry, Dan. <laughs> All good. Yours is like, oh. Ah! You the poor it. Annie over here. Annie went from Jones to Korsinski. I know. <laughs> poor thing. I went from Robinson to Impostato. Yeah, the Impostato is a mouthful, isn't it? Right. I never had to spell my last. Well, actually, when I was at Robinson, you would not believe the number of people that would be like, is that Ian or Owen? I was like, have you ever met a Robinson with Ian? <laughs> no, <laughs> really. There's no such thing. There's no. It's <laughs> weird. I always just have to say flouter rhymes with water and people still call me flauta no matter what. Flauta. Are you a flautist? No. <laughs> I love how your name has pasta in it now though. Are they like is your is your relatives were they like pasta makers or something? No, no. So impostato means like the a bread maker, but um it's <clears throat> Joey always tells people, and I've done it too is that if anybody is confused about the spelling, you just spell I'm pasta too. <laughs> I'm pasta too, T-O, too. not T-O-O, -O, like grammatically correct, but. I got gotcha. you, I got gotcha. you. I like it. That's kind of like a pasta potato hybrid. I like that. I like it. But for imps. Plus, oh, for imps. <laughs> But it's like way more interesting. I thought, I mean, my, my maiden name was cool. Like, don't get me wrong, it was a cool name, but there's like thousands of Jamie Robinsons all over the world. And I think there's literally one Jamie Pistato in the entire in the United States. That makes me easier to Google. I don't know yes. if that's the true, though. True. Talk on Facebook. Well, you're also Jamie. You're not Jamie, technically. You're, you jam, you rock, you're Jamie. <laughs> right, Jamie. <laughs> Jamie. <laughs> Ooh. Unless you're short for James and you're a boy, Jamie, right? Could be. Could be. Yeah. Ah, oh, this isn't so fun, you guys. Okay. I gotta see the finished products before I hang up Zoom. So. All right. <laughs> Let's see what you got. I wanna see everyone's too before we go. Okay, so I'm gonna bring mine over. Again, I don't really know. So we can see everybody wants. Okay. Okay. Oh, there it is. Ooh, oh, it's nice. snowy. I, I love it. I love the snow. Yeah. I put the snow because I feel like it makes it like. It really works. I, it needed it. Uh -huh. I like how your sky turned out a lot more pastel y, too. Yeah, I want it. I'm loving everyone's super like intense sky. Yeah. I'm good with it. That's right. You're 40 now. You got to take it easy. And <laughs> That's so intense. Morning. Morning. All right. Morning. Yeah, I see it as a sunrise for sure. I like how your trees are kind of like ferny too. Oh, nice. oh I love your trees. Your layers of mountains really have some depth there too. Yeah. 
give a bushy you know, it's a little <laughs> <laughs> wasn't quite as fluffy as i was hoping for <laughs> i feel like I, I need to do some more more on my trees too <laughs> like, okay. might need some more you gotta do it foliage all right candace we haven't seen candace since like the very beginning oh she didn't want to show off that's why <laughs> <laughs> i see i see you got a nice fade in the sky i can't i can't see unless people talk how do i change that there's like a view oh, there. Button. i see you gotta do the gallery view yeah yeah that's turned out very really nice, nice. Wow. all right all right who else let's come on let's all show them how, how do they turn on the uh the canvas sheet julie let's see hey. michelle Oh, oh, no. oh, Michelle's is so good. Oh, I'm jealous. Yeah. Oh, oh, I'm jealous. jealous. Yeah. <laughs> that oh, God, hers is nice. She, Michelle, you were serious back there. <laughs> <laughs> My I like the smooth look to the trees. It looks really cool. Yeah. <laughs> All right, I'm ready. Here we go. All right, let's see. Bartender, I need a drink. It's gorgeous. Damn, you know? Look at all these highlights. I, know, I like it. The snow it's idea. Oh, you know that the uh, other trees look kind of palmy, actually. Yeah, I thought I'd keep like it with the evergreen style. That's really pretty. It's awesome. Yeah. I think I already showed mine, but there it is. There's the I love your sunset. That's yeah. awesome. Looking look nice. It Those is. trees look really good, too. The trees look like they're dancing. <laughs> Yours is really good. Everyone's is really good. Oh, excellent work, everybody. Thanks for joining me. Um, feel, yeah. free, feel free to check by, by my, my website at any point in time. If if Heather doesn't invite you to another party or Heather and Jamie, um, feel free to check out mrpaintparty.com. We're always posting new, new paintings and whatnot. But I'm sure we'll have another one, right, Jamie? Uh-huh. Uh-huh. <laughs> <laughs> so. you to share the puppy child with everybody next time. I want like, delivered to the door. Yeah. We went through it pretty fast. Oh, we sure did. Party it down. <laughs> yeah. I'm spilling. Oh. All right, my lovelies, you have yourself a beautiful evening. Thank you for joining me. Um, I got happy birthday, Jamie. Yeah, happy birthday. Happy Thank birthday, Jamie. Enjoy the rest of the night. Cheers. Thank you. Thank you for Have a good for New Year's, Heather. everyone. Happy New Year. Happy, happy New Year. Happy New Year. You don't have a day over 30, Jamie. Yeah. Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks. Bye, guys. Bye. Bye. Bye.